All right, recording. The crew of the Dragon Horizon finds its way to Stormhaven to meet with the Grand Prior. When we get to to Stormhaven, we are <laughs> escorted by an armored entourage. Wait, they were waiting for us and to take us to the Grand Pyre. Uh, she knew why we were there because she was visited by Velasios and to he told her we were coming. Um, she would have. Uh, she were, she said that she would get rid of Bond's curse if we found the hot, the eye and hand of Vecna for her. So Lucas pulled out his crystal ball and gazed to find the eye and hand of Vecna. Um, he saw that it was deep, deep under the ocean at a city, and underneath that city was a cave with Meliana. Um, and she was the one that has the, a, the hand and eye of Vecna. Um, and she's accompanied by a hundred foot long centipede that is that we know is the third beast of devastation as we are um, debate de deliberating on how we're going to get down there it comes up that there's a magical item that could potentially get us down there or um, it's just going to be difficult because the civilians of this city have not talk to people of this world in 10 years and like to be isolated there was a few dates that occurred after talk was had we agreed to come back tomorrow to figure out where this item was and there was some shopping done otherwise an eventful day and Anand went on a date I sure did. All right, but oh, yeah, right. the mother of dragons. <laughs> I mean, sorry, basically. that was a little quick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, it's it was even in the murder dice picture. Oh, I need. I, I guess I haven't examined the murder dice picture. I, I like the no, murder dice pictures. It. I look forward to the murder dice pictures. Yeah, um, I kind of, I totally didn't copy that for Wednesday oh. game at all. Like, I don't, I totally do not have a murder dragon. <laughs> you put the murder hearts dragon on dead. Anon's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and he's holding a little rose. That's you amazing. Rose? You should put him on a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you needed his picture. Okay. <laughs> that's that's incredible. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. But yes, so that good summary. Um so you guys end your evening and wow, for some wild. it was a better evening than others. Um and you awake in the morning. Well, actually, you don't awake next morning. You awake before that, in the middle of the night. Uh, um, if something happens in the middle of the night, point of reference, every night I, I make the alarm that goes around everybody's room. That's fine. The alarm goes off. Um, Wake up, everybody! Uh, initially, it goes off for Anand. In Anand's room is where it gets set off. And not Anand! And uh, you, Anand. I was sleeping. Well, no, you were trancing. Well, actually, technically, no, you weren't either of those things. You were turned to stone. Um, he... <laughs> Why is she here? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you, out of your petrification, you find yourself in a humanoid form, appearing to have been polymorphed into just a generic-looking elf. Basically, I want to say generic you just call looking. Me basic? No, well, so <laughs> you come out of your form having been polymorphed oh, you. because you were obviously petrified, and you see the archon standing before you, and he says, "Wake up the others, something's happened." 
I, I mean, I'll, uh, I would say I'll as soon as I hear the alarm message. spell go off, that would ding me. I'm already like rushing now, to the I'm going to send them a message too, just to double down and scream in their head, wake up! <laughs> um, <laughs> at, this, <laughs> at this time, Anand, the one thing that kind of stands out to you is you see, especially for the middle of the night, the streets are busy. It's not chaotic. It's not hectic. But what you do here is crying. And you notice that there's certain people carrying candles. Oh. Oh, fuck. Okay, Bob doesn't know this, but I'm kind of doing it as a as a player, kind of inferring what's going on. <laughs> I'm not saying shit. Well, it, it, it's a, That's it's terrifying. A, a vigil. What's going on? What's going on? Who died? I think it's best if you come downstairs to the radio. Oh, fuck. The radio? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll float downstairs. As long as it's not the Archon, I should be okay. That's my dude. But the Archon is, is, the, Archon is the one that woke you. you up. He's the yeah. one that's talking. Oh, okay. I'm, like, I'm going yeah, through yeah, my yeah. mind of like, who's important people that like we, we know like, that we care about? Yeah. Oh, certainly it's not that dude from the beginning that I hate so much. I would be so sad if it was him who died. <laughs> yeah, you who, would be because you want to be the one to kill him. <laughs> who, who do we know that like, if, they, if they died, like it would cause this much of a reaction to the town? Uh, high Queen or High King? But, yeah, uh, think of anybody. What about the uh, uh, the old Volt? Not the guy who's. Uh, um, I, I got a feeling we just let's go to the safe. We're going to find out what's going on. Yeah, let's so. just go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go. A non new girlfriend. <laughs> Never mind. That's who I thought was dead. A non new girlfriend. She doesn't get to die. <laughs> <laughs> so you go downstairs and you hear the radio, and even the news reporter sounds very distant and. She says, no way. "It's it is with great sorrow that I reveal the heralds of Requiem have been defeated. No way. They, from the well, report that I was that. that I received, they were fighting Shalcor Kyrell. They tracked him down, and apparently they." We're on the cusp of victory. It is unknown exactly what happened, but a monstrosity of some sort attacked both of them, both the Heralds of Requiem and Shalcor in that moment, killing several members of the Heralds and recovering the fugitive as he screamed as he was carried away. We still do not know what happened. Uh, details are still coming in. Um, it is not believed that this was a rescue of this Shalcor. Um, it was a being with seven legs and three arms, and all that could be noted was a pair of large antlers on his head. And he, from what has been mentioned by Drexel, who thankfully is still with us, all he could be heard saying is, I have finally done it. Anybody the, uh, that's dead? the list of the dead are as follows. Lena Evangard was confirmed dead at the scene. Her body has not been recovered. If you need reminding, this was... It was confirmed long ago that she was in a relationship with Drexel Belrook. Grim Grimscar, World Martial Arts Champion, is among the fallen. And Azon Shotogust, Crown Princess of Galeberg, was also confirmed dead. Lashana Leodon, the Celestial Witch, is still missing. She has not been found, and it is not known whether she still lives. The only two who made it were Drexel Belrook and Norn Bravemight. And they are being held at a hospital that is, as of now, being kept confidential and are reported to be in critical condition. 
Let us all come together during this difficult time. The Heralds of Requiem have averted countless tragedies that could have spelt doom for this world and the people in it. Let us not reflect on their loss this day, but on their triumphs in the past. And may the gods help us all. And suddenly the broadcast cuts. So it was the giant ant that did this one? Had seven legs and three arms and a set of antlers. That is all you know. And that it was said to have quoted the words, I have finally done it. Oh, it wasn't Shalkor that said that. It was the the creature. The creature, the yes. Jackalope. Sure. Yes. yes. What would have antlers, seven legs, and three arms? Well, first I, I thought like antlers, like antenna, like ants. Because again, we're, we've got all these giant beasts that are running around. It made it pretty clear that this was just antlers. It called it antlers, not got pincers. It. Antlers. Oh, like, like deer antlers, or like very much so. Yeah, very similar to that. Like deer antlers. Deer antlers with the velvet. Or no velvet. I don't know what you mean. Okay. Well, well the only velvet. thing that we know that is a creature that has antlers are the ancient elves. So this is probably some monstrosity that has been uh, an evolutionary or combination or something with an ancient elf. <laughs> so, um... Now that you are all up to speed, talk to me. Tell me if you have any theories. You have proven yourself much over the over the previous months, and you have proven that your judgment carries weight. Well, what are I you mean, thinking? Before we go off on theories, I mean, we have people we can talk to. I mean, we can talk to Drexel if need be, or I mean, if I was able to find Meliana yesterday, I can try and find Lashana today. If that yeah, is something that um, you would like to do, I would prepare yourself for the worst. Um, it is entirely possible that she was also killed and that they just weren't able to find a body. I'm well, missing is, is there... missing, but I'd, I'd rather have some kind of idea. Is there Are there Agreed. which which bodies are were recovered that we have access to? Um, Just well, to... if you can call it recovered, bits of Lena Evangard, Grim Greenscar, and Azon Shoto Gust were recovered. Okay. So, why don't we just go and resurrect one of them and ask them what happened? Well, we also have Drexel Bo uh, Bellrook. Drexel Bellrook. He's still alive. survived the entire thing. Yeah, he was there. And don't he's forget, already. Okay. Shalcor was there, and if he's been captured, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know where he's being held, or you know, if he's somewhere near where this hospital is, where everybody else that did survive is at. Well, could we not find more answers if we did that on Shalcor? We can go talk to Shalcor. Well, no, we can't. I mean, we can't talk to him because we can scry on Shalcor. Him, we can go talk to um, uh, Drex. Bell why don't we do this i don't and looking at the archon i mean we got people we can talk to to get a better idea of what's going on if you can get us to them i mean i, I think it'd be prevalent for all of us to find out i mean in the meantime i don't know what time of day it is i don't know if we've got a long rest and not but I, I can go ahead and at least try to find uh lashana and just see what happens it's about 2 a.m right now um, so the Archon says, those are all very wise points, but I have a, I have a request to make of you. For the time being, let me join you. I would like to travel with you until this crisis is averted. Um, totally down. Yeah, I don't think totally anybody down. was going to say no to that. Is your, is your daughter coming? <laughs> 
<laughs> can your daughter can your daughter come? No, I mean, she, she can, but you would have to make. She is needed here. Um, her attention must still be on the eye and hand of Vecna. What point is there on getting through this current tragedy if we are simply claimed by the next one? So you must look towards the future, and that exactly that is exactly what I need her doing. Okay. Totally unrelated, but what do you think about the name Anod Junior? Does that does that sound okay to you? Would you be opposed to someone being named that if they were in your family, hypothetically? He gives you a side eye and for a moment <laughs> says, "You know, Anand, I um, I've been working on a spell that can potentially turn someone's body inside out. I don't know if you know of a a test subject that I could use for this experiment, or should I find no, one well, my, on my own?" I've recently. T- Never mind. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna. <laughs> you know, people have I'm just, just died, guys. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> this has never stopped yeah, us before. <laughs> we should be more serious about it. Um, Archon. The re- no, true. Uh, in Ooh. character, the reason why I am not, uh, this doesn't bother me, is because we're like demigods at this point. I could literally go take those bits and resurrect one of these people. So I'm not too shaken by the idea. Anyway, go go for it. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, it's this. Um, Archon, since you want to join us, what I understand why like okay you're gonna join us what do you say we do and what is what is the next steps well the world needs a new symbol of hope the people are hurting they need someone to rely on and I'll be honest I think those people are you these New Solidarity, they consider themselves to be second best. In fact, that is their rank. And in fact, I bet now with this development, they consider themselves to be the strongest. Yeah, but But those were also the guys that turned as soon as the the tide was not in their favor. Whenever the psionics were, like, being a threat, they sided with them. They didn't actually do the right thing. All but one of them did. There was one member who did not join them. Mm. Regardless. Which Which one was that? Uh, Garen Durambolt, their group engineer. He opposed them and did not join them in their final assault. Yes. Interesting. I must talk to this Garen. Regardless, those people are you. And the reason... I must be fully transparent. I may have some of my own motivations for wishing to travel with you. I would like to be able to pretend that you are the only ones who stand to benefit from my company. But the truth is that the benefit is mutual. I must go there. I must go to Invalion. And I'm on the cusp of finishing a spell that could safely get us there. I need uh, to go can there. I help? Is this something I can assist with and possibly learn? Uh, I would time? certainly accept your help. Um, unfortunately, you do have a curse on you that uh, uh, prohibits you from m- making new spells. What? That is another reason, another order of business for why I wish to travel with you. You see, with full transparency, um, The Archmage, Philastrios, he wishes for you to join the Magi. I'm sure you have gathered this. He has taken quite a special interest in you. And he wishes to recruit you by bringing you to this tower. And I am under orders to take you there. Admittedly, I consider all of you to be friends, allies. And I don't wish for anything to come of this that would put us at odds so i'm asking you please willingly accompany me there so let me get this right archon you the first the the heroes of our game die the first thing you want us to and you want us to step into their role but the first thing you want us to do is for our own gain is for ourselves not for the people 
Because no. this is going to look bad on us if we just go to the mage tower because we want to get rid of his curse. You will need to be, all of you, will need to be in top form for this. Anand cannot afford to be struggling with a curse when he next challenges what is likely the most powerful mortal creature that has walked this world in quite some time. I need all of you in top shape. This is playing the long game. Right, Despite I how it... just... I do I want to be just... in top shape. I, I understand that, but it, the, the narrative of the media is not going to look at it that way, I don't think. But I could well, be wrong. You may be right. And if you recall, might I remind you, there have been instances before where the narrative of the media did not portray you well. But you overcame it. It's fine. They're fake news. I, Let's I'm go. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> enough chit chat. I do believe it's time to go. Or get rest and then leave. But if... Whatever. If we've got a long, I get. If we have a long rest, let's just go. If we haven't, let's go back to sleep and then go. Very well. And I do thank you all for your cooperation in all of this. Forgive me if I seem a little calloused at the loss. I, I do care. It does bother me. But when you've been alive for as many years as I have, you've seen many come and go, and I suppose you become a little numb to it. Understandable. It's it's unfortunate for what happened. I must talk to Balrog as soon as we can, though. First, we and must even well, discover this... which hospital he is being held at. Agreed. There might be some information that's hard to get, but who knows? But yeah. Let's. So, are we going back to sleep, or are we just going? Well, you haven't gotten a long rest yet. Okay. So you would need to. Each of you would need to sleep for about. Other than our elves, actually, our elves, or in, no, actually, really I'm just, just go... would have gotten a long rest already. I'm just, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the archon um, and see if I can aid him. I'm still a wizard and a super genius, so I can still help and take notes on everything. So it'll be in my spell book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, Anand, yeah, you would have been the only one that's gotten a long rest at this point. Everybody else would, um... But Actually, also, Anand, you've got, like, 45 minutes left till you are no longer an elf again and you turned us back to stone. Voss would be awake. Voss would be working on a simulacrum. Um, yeah, that's what I was gonna try to be working on last time. Oh, yeah, that's right! Oh. Um, and you took a, a potion of watchful rest, right? Yeah. Yes, he did. Cool. Okay, I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, you would you would have had time, so let's uh, let's make you a simulacrum real quick. We'll 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 handle just that remove, whenever the time comes. Does remove curse not work on my condition? No, we already tried that. We tried to spell magic yeah. and remove curse. We did. Okay, it's been a minute. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, this is lame. Can I just put my essence into a different body? <laughs> I thought you were, like, proud to be a Vold. Like, I can make another Vold body. <laughs> well, yes, there's a, there's a thing called the clone spell, so sure. But it's fine. I'd make a few augments, add a couple inches, like, my character would be awesome. <laughs> Uh, inches <laughs> where? No, Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm I, I just want to be over 6'2", okay? <laughs> he said, I already have a mash form. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, okay, so you all, um, well, other than Anand and Voss, um, return to your rests. How is... Um, just in character. How's everybody feeling right now? What's everybody thinking at the moment? Uh I will have a I would have a conversation with Kiara. Um Because I kinda have this thought and uh I'll I'll play it. We'll just say we had that conversation. You'll you'll get what it is in the morning. 
Okay. Um, I guess Balin would kind of be like sad that the other members kind of like are feeling empathy for the other members of the Heroes of Wakulun, but ultimately glad that uh no that um not no harm, but glad that uh Belrook didn't die. His girlfriend's dead though. Yeah, he feels empathy for that, but <laughs> he didn't even know. Bond didn't even know that they were a thing. Hey, <laughs> so could be worse. Could have been his wife. He'll be all right. <laughs> I'll him I know. I know. I see him, but it's gonna be really weird asking him for that shell of that. <laughs> see, it's funny because when you Drexel called me on the phone Brandon earlier character? and you were and you were talking, no, that's that's a. That's actually Sean's last character's grandson. Um, That's Shaziki's yeah. Shaziki? grandson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My ah. god's grandson. Cause, well, uh, then, that's a lot. Yeah. Shaziki Talk about having some the... shoes to feel. Good lord, how do you gonna, live up to that? I was going to say, uh, the guy that worshipped the angel of death is the one that survived. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. His patron is the angel of death. <laughs> so uh yeah. anyway. Because uh the angel of death is one of those rare deities that can be both a uh deity and a patron, regardless yeah, depending so, on what people need him to be. So Gavin, what were you thinking when I called you earlier? Oh, yeah, Real that's quick. what I was about to say. Like, when you were like, yeah, I'll just talk to the Heralds of Requiem. I just literally just like, yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> sure thing. No. I want to get the we'll shell of the damn plug. Damn oh, it. What'd you say, Kelly? He said, go talk she, to she them real nothing. quick. Oh, okay. She, she's like, go talk to them real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Anand, um, I will say since, you know, you are awake, um, he takes you off and he, he takes you to kind of a remote area of, actually, before I say this, um, for an inspiration point or a hundred gold, what is the name of the building that you are in right now? The headquarters of the Order of Shield and Light. Jesus. Mm. The headquarters of the Order of Shield and Light. Um, Morning Glory Tower. Nice guess, but no. Okay. Had HQ short. Uh, uh, <laughs> Did you just call it uh, HQ? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like HQ it. HQ of the sword and shield. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Going once. Yeah. Going twice. Going twice. Not the... Lightbringer's Conclave. Oh. Tongue twister much? Not really. Hey, I'm not good. It's who, been a month, man. Who remembers the town that the witches are in? Night vine. <laughs> See how easy that go. is? It's night, and there's a lot of vines. <laughs> it's night vine. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Sounds like kind of what you were talking to me about this morning, Sean. Yep. <laughs> I, like, I like the name HQ. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, he takes you off to a, a separate room of the Lightbringer's Conclave. Um, and he begins kind of just drawing some runes on a stone tablet. And, you know, it, you, you've heard of this process before. You've never created your own spell as of yet, but... Creating a spell is basically, it's like, creating a spell would be like trying to form a key from scratch for a keyhole that you have no idea what the key should look like. It's a long process of shaping a new, like, new runes into a spell that can unlock a certain part of the weave to do a certain thing, basically. Um, and you see that he's basically doing that. He's scribbling on a tablet. He tries casting a spell, and it's a dud. So he tries sc sc scribbling something else, tries casting a spell, and it's a dud. Um, and he just does this over and over and over again. I will help however I can. Okay, um, give me an arcana check.
A 20. Okay. That would be the DC for this. So, it occurs to you, and you see something that he's doing. Um, the rune that he keeps inscribing is he... This is, this is a warding spell that he's creating. You can tell from some of the, like, you know, it's a mixture of draconic and elvish runes, as many different spells are. Um, but you see the symbol for barrier, which would make sense, and you see the symbol for protection, which would make sense, but one part thing occurs to you. He's using a symbol that just means magic. But maybe that's too broad. Maybe it needs to be raw magic, untempered magic, not just the weave as a whole that you're protecting yourself from. Should I tell him of this? I mean, that's up to you. Yeah, I'm going to let him know and be like, hey, about this one right here, why not try inputting this and see what he says? He says... That is... Let's try it. Let's try it. He he waves his hand over the tablet, and you see some of the runes disappear. And just kind of tracing in the air with his finger above this tablet, you see him put in the symbol, instead of magic, the symbol that means force in that spot. Snaps his fingers, the, se the spell settles into the tablet, and he casts it. And immediately, Ooh. Anand, you are over overcome with a migraine as this large bubble stems out in all directions from him. Him being okay. completely unaware of the massive headache that you're now suffering says, I've done it. I've done it. And I'm, and I'm going to be like, oh, and I'm going to put my hand on my head. <laughs> what what's wrong? When you just did that, my head is it's pounding. It feels like something's exploding inside. Uh -huh. He snaps his finger again and withdraws the barrier and asks you, Tell me, is the sensation that you're feeling um, anything similar to how you felt when you visited the Pallet Elves? Yes, actually. Why? A huge grin begins spreading across his face. I've just found their ancient ritual that they used at the formation of their race to protect themselves from the Vold. Granted, it is not uh -oh. pure cool. protection. The Vold, with enough willpower, can venture inside of it, but it is it causes them discomfort, and all in all, creates a general degree of safety for their people. What if that same very frequency is the exact antithesis to the magical fallout, to the arcane radiation that permeates in Valion? What if it is the magical opposite of that? Which is why it affects you in such a way. We might have a cure. Potentially so. Oh, this is big. This is big. You can see how you're starting to see how much of just a nerd for magic he is with how excited he's getting here. I'm going to pull out my spell book. And write this down. You can start writing it down. It's a very complicated spell, and it is a ninth level spell, which means it will take you eighteen hours to record this into your spell book. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him know. Hey, I'm about to sit here for a minute and write this down because I want this just in case. Whole damn day um, and a half. <laughs> yes, it is <laughs> worth it. Um, I'm just gonna take a coffee break real quick. If um, if by chance I uh, um, I turn to stone, <laughs> would you please continue <laughs> writing? <laughs> and I'll I'll take up I'll take things up when I wake up again. <laughs> he says, "Oh, I cannot do that. No, it is 
he said it is heresy for any wizard, for any mage to write in another mage's spell book. That is yours. Well, you, do you that must have be you. Depetrification. <laughs> I could cast polymorph on you another time. Yes, do that. Do that. Please. I, must I will run this. out of casts of polymorph before you get that. You, you can start. Perhaps take it up later for finishing the process. I need this. We're going to um, transition over to Voss. So um, you set up your ritual and you cast the spell to summon your simulacrum. And you see before you a bunch of tiny little ice crystals form into a perfect handsome copy of you. That's my baby boy. <laughs> And he says to you, and he says, like when he appears, he uh, he's like, "Oh, good, you finally brought the weird, the real one back. It's a, uh, it's it's good to see you." The real one? Yeah, me. I'm the real one. Huh? Huh? Who's the real one? He ignores your statement and just goes, "La la 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 la." What? <laughs> He's just... This one's acting a little bit off. This is nothing but a flavor thing, but this one seems a bit odd. A little goofy? A little goofy. Um, He's like you, but if you were a hundred times weirder. Hmm. He is now dancing. He's not like cursed or anything, right? This isn't a curse? I mean, you don't think so. He's doing an Irish river dance right in front of you. Of course, it's not called that, but. Um, anybody got an idea about this? Yeah, it's just getting one to be funny and putting on some extra flavor. Oh, okay. All right, just as long as he's still functional. Yeah, he's functional. He's just, he just likes to dance. He is now trying to engage a dance with you. It's a side effect of the Watch Pro S potion. My bad. <laughs> really? You know, maybe it might be. Oh, I don't know. I mean, there there is a method behind my madness. If I decide to do something just fucking weird, there's usually a reason why I decided to do it. I'm just so confused. You know what? Me too. Daytime and we all wake. <laughs> right. Um... So you, anyway, you now have your simulacrum, so. He's just, uh, he might have a screw or two loose. All right, so daytime, and you all wake, and the city, all in all, has a very somber tone. Um, I mean, they were celebrities. I mean, people bought action figures of them. Um, there are kids who dressed up as them for festivals. I mean, like, they were heroes. Everyone's favorite. They meant everything to the public eye. And in this world that glamorizes adventurers to the degree that it does, yeah, I mean, it's it's back, like, it's back, basically Elvis died, pretty much, is how the populace is reacting. Yeah, Drexel even sold cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. I hope I didn't have any money in that stock. Probably tanked. <laughs> <laughs> Red Apple Cigarettes. He was the official uh, spokesperson for them. I would like to uh, find... I don't remember what her name is. Uh, the Archon's daughter. Oh, um... Andraste. Andraste Drakelnon. Uh, I would like to go find Andraste. You do, and honestly, you don't. You don't have to really even look that hard for her. She's exactly where you, she was the first time you saw her, in just sort of the main chambers of the Lightbringers Conclave. Um, of, her, of course, her and the Grand Knight Creed Dumaine, he is also there. But you've noticed he's a bit of a quiet, stoic fellow, so he doesn't really react much whenever you enter. Um, you do, however, see that Nestin is with her. Um, and as you approach, he he goes. He's you. You audibly hear him 
say to her, There he is, Grand Prior! Best behavior. And she just you just hear her go, Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and... But yes, you were there. Standing in her chambers. Morning all, I wish it was a good morning, but I guess it's just morning today. Indeed. Um, I myself have had many interactions with them. In fact, I've worked with them on several contracts. I haven't accompanied them, but I've supported them. It is a tragedy, and nobody saw this coming. There is certainly an air of unease that lingers in the air. Uh, I suppose everyone expected them to be the ones to save us. Well, she trails off for a second before saying, though, in my opinion, not all hope is lost. About that, it seems your father has got some pretty high hopes for us, I and mean, he's wanting us to set off here shortly with him. Um, you see her face kind of form into a, a bit of a frown. Oh, no, I, I was, um, I was not aware. Well, I, I have a favor to ask. This being what it is, and to be honest, I um, I really respect the position you hold here, especially looking a little bit different the way that you do. And uh, this is my fiance, actually, Kiara. Um, I think it might be best, if possible, if she could stay here with you for a bit while we head off. Uh, she's a little new to this area, and uh, she kind of sticks out just because her physicality and yours are fairly similar, so I think you can understand that. I, I think you being here in the position that you are and the, you know, the status that you've gained is going to kind of help her and be able to fit in in this area. So would you be willing to let her help you out? She's actually pretty powerful. She um she gives both you and Kiara sort of a kind smile and says to Kiara actually she says you're not half dragon are you and Kiara responds back and says oh I'm sorry what exactly gave it away she kind of gives a chuckle and says very well she can stay um, and in that moment, you sort of just, like, feel Kiara just kind of, like, take a couple little scoots closer to you. Just, and, as a, re you know, as a reaction to the inevitable fact that you guys are about to split ways again. I will, uh, uh, As this is going, i oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 I'm just saying, I'm, just to kind of fast forward, we don't want to get all sentimental. I'll, I'll say an emotional temporary goodbye. Well, Since, uh. uh my fiance who has not had a character sheet made in six months and has not been able to speak <laughs> I will leave her here where she is uh, out of harm's way as best I can put her uh, while we're doing all this uh, as y'all are talking y'all hear a knock on the door cause Vaughn has stuck, uh, stuck out or sought out um, the Grand Prior uh, I thought I assumed you were already there with them. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, um. Yeah. No, I thought Luke was just Lucas going, but yeah, I'll be there. I mean, I was there, but anybody wanted to tag along, I'm more than welcome to. Yeah, I'll I'll have tag along. Um. Yes, Grand Prior. I have a question about a mythical beast that I want to locate. Of course. I'm looking for a Sphinx. A sphinx. Yeah, a sphinx. I believe this sphinx teleported me from the timeline that I was in to this timeline we're in now. There is a legend of a powerful time traveling sphinx that travels between the past, present, and future. Um, 
the legend states that he dwells in a pyramid within the eastern half of the Taraski Desert, relatively close to the coast. It has a gold tip at the peak of the pyramid. I believe that you would likely find him there if you happen to be looking when he is in the correct timeline, that is. Yes, thank you very much for this information. Yes, it is. Thank you. you are quite welcome. And uh, at this point, you hear Neston speak up. However, I did wish to bring a, a matter to of concern to your attention. Um, I was wondering if you could investigate the Grand Prior, for she has me quite worried. After she came back from her outing with with Anand, I, I heard her make a, a squealing noise when she walked through the door, and she just looks at Neston and says, Neston, stop talking. Oh, but I was I was worried for you. Neston, stop talking. Yes, Neston. I do believe yeah, Grandpa will be okay. It is not a she, concern. Her head looks like a tomato. She is as red as red can be. All right, Neston. Uh, are, now, are you going with us? Or are you staying here? Well, I, I shall accompany you. Uh, of course. Um, Come on. We had to go meet up with the Archon. Right, but the the Grand Hurry Prior's up now. Health... No, no. Hurry up now. No, she's fine. Hurry up now. Come on. I'll, I'll, we'll talk later about it. Nest. And Come as on. you're walking out, he says, she sounded like she was in pain. I... Yeah, yeah. She's not in pain. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it later, Neston. I promise. <laughs> he he finally submits and walks out with you. Yeah, and I let him know that the reason why she was doing that is because she was happy to go on the date with Anon. <laughs> Little shithead. <laughs> um, at that moment, she um, she approaches you, <laughs> Anon, and at this point, it's just you, her, and um, the Archon. And yes. She says to you, I can't pretend that I know exactly what it is that you are about to set off and do. But I do hope you'll, um, you'll return afterwards. I, um, just, she, she, you can tell she's not used to this. So she doesn't really yeah. know what to say. So she just says, just, um, come back. Um. As to try to be formal, considering her dad's here, I'll um, I'll I'll take her hand, give a slight bow, a uh, gentle kiss on top of the head, and say, "I'm going so that I may return." At this point, you notice that the Archon has already started the process of leaving, and when the door <laughs> and when the door closes, um, <laughs> she pulls you in and kisses you. Oh snap! Ah! You mean pulls me up because she's taller than I am? Leans I just get down and pulls like, you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> if you she, hear she... me let out a slight. Legs dangling. Yes, legs dangling to the end. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> just reminds me of Futurama. <laughs> snoo snoo. So when you were kissing her on the head, you were jumping? <laughs> yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> um, and in that Ooh. moment, whenever, whenever she pulls away from the kiss, you again see that her head is completely beach red, and she just looks at you and says, um, um, Okay, bye. And casts teleport on herself and disappears. Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. I'm loving this. As, as we're getting away, I'm just gonna give a wink to Kira and like just make sure that that happens. All right. So should we travel by skyship or or should we travel by uh, car? Well, I thought we were just getting teleported right now. We're gonna teleport. Yeah. We're we're demigods. Or, I don't need your he, machinery. Well, do the you Archon have a says to, to you, um, he says, I do. But, All right. 
I am not allowed uh, to take anybody through it other than myself. Well, what I why can haven't you taught do, me how to use it? What I okay. can do is get you to the next closest city, that would be Thalassia, or you can drive or take. We can take our airship. Real quick, I'm, I'm sorry. Before we do all that, I, I really want to know if I can find out what happened to Lashana. So. Are you able to send a message to her? Just to even see if she responds? I've already tried, and either she is not responding, or there is something keeping my message from reaching her. Can you send one to someone else? Of course. Can you send it to a gentleman known as Jance Hanaresk? What is... So I, I know what you mean, but um, this is him saying, and what is that name supposed to mean? Well, I don't know if you know about this about Lashana, but she's she's been reborn, relived. She has gone on and on again as some type of magical dragon, but she has someone that is her huh? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> but she has someone that is her soul bond, um, and it keeps them connected. So if there's anyone else that might know if she's okay, if she's around, if she's still... I don't know, but... She'll go home. He, he says he's going to ask. Soul bond She'll is Lashana home. Leodon, the celestial witch, a steel, steel dragon. dragon? Yeah. Hold it. I thought they went mis extinct a millennia ago. Well, she's You're telling actually... me there is still a living, potentially, steel dragon. She's on her last life, so I don't know if she, there is or not. We have to find her. He says that with a, just a new sense of purpose in his voice. She cannot be allowed to perish if she has not already. It would be an unbearable tragedy for such a beautiful, rare specimen, such as her kind. Can, can we not refer to her as a specimen, please? Uh, uh, apologies, apologies. <laughs> I, I, I get a little excited when it comes to other members of my own kind. Um, well, I'm a silver Gosh. dragon, but still, we have to save her. Well, she must still be alive, and I will send this message to this Jantanaresque. Let Tim know that it's me that's tasking. But Shana has had a lot of interest in me, not just as a fellow witches, but she's had some premonitions about me, which is why she gave me this wand. And Jantz is familiar. He was the one that actually gave it to me in, in her stead. I see. You know, you are quite an interesting character, Lucas. I do what I do. I will send you a message. And his eyes sort of glaze over for a second. And he says, well, the good news is that I confirm that she is alive. The bad news is that she is in a great deal of pain right now. Unbearable agony, he described. Apparently, uh, I did not even know this about soul bonds. But if she dies, he dies. so does he. Mm -hmm. so yeah. simply the fact that he is alive right now confirms her status as living well that's a step in the right direction but chance is somebody else that we might want to talk to he's actually a pretty good healer so if we can bring him into the fold for whatever we have coming up especially if Lashana's involved it might not be a terrible idea he is currently staying in Callum Lux. Perhaps we could meet up with him there. It's just options I'm putting on the table. Very well, but the first order of business now. Let's get this curse removed. Shall we fly, drive, or teleport to Thalassia? 
<clears throat> I think we're kind of on the clock here, fellas. So whatever's the fastest. Well, the fastest would be whatever works. Thalassia initially, but then of course you would be lacking transportation and getting yourself from Thalassia to Galeberg. So my recommendation is flying, and plus I could sort of use a bit of time to stretch my wings. Let's go fly. If it is, then. So you arrive at your ship, and for at the beginning, he um, he takes off with you on the ship in his humanoid form. Of course, when you crest above the clouds. You see him just kind of outstretch his arms, fall over the side of the ship, and immediately bursting back through the clouds is this immensely large silver dragon who is flying along with you as you travel. So, and with that, it only takes about four to five hours journey to reach Thalassia. And of course, you, Voss, have actually spent a decent amount of time in this city, according to your backstory. Uh, Can I still be writing are, down the I spell have... in my book? Yes, you Is could that... be. You're not done yet, but... Um, what, would you, what were you saying, Lee? Yes, I believe I have... <clears throat> I'm trying to go through my backstory because it's been like... A while. Jesus, has it been like six months or a year since I joined? It, it's It's... It doesn't feel like it, but yeah, you've, you've been, been part like of the game for a months. while. I don't think I've looked at my backstory in like six months. How long is it going to take us to get to this city? Probably only like three or four hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, not it's not far. If you, look at, if you look at your map, Thalassia is pretty close to Stormhaven. Um, that being said, as you continue further north, um, it gets continually darker and colder, but that's to be expected with the region is north it's north but also um thalassia has a certain degree of magical darkness that has settled on the area as well it's just a, re a result of elven high magic in that area it's just kind of always in a perpetual state of night even when it's day the closer you get to thalassia north <laughs> huh? so by this point um it's, it's the strangest sight. As you approach and you're about to land in the outskirts of Thalassia, the, you, you, look up in the, in, you look up in the sky and you see the sun. It's there. But it's still dark. It's still nighttime anyway. And you disembark your ship and you are in the city of Thalassia. Let me consult my notes on something real quick. All right. So as you guys know, Thalassi is the home of the Moon Elves. Um, it's it's pretty common knowledge. Um, that being said, in a similar spirit to the fact that the area is kind of always bathed in perpetual night, it's got a very vibrant nightlife. Um, a lot of people, it's it's a not the most popular, but very fairly popular tourist attraction, and a lot of the people that love this city swear by it as like a hidden gem. Um, you also know that as far as the different elvish sub races, especially high elves, which moon elves are a sub race of, um, moon elves are known for being kind of less stuffy than other high elves. Um, many high elves kind of carry themselves with an air of superiority. Moon elves don't do that. Um, they pride themselves on being able to cooperate with other races and they don't view themselves as being above non elves. So, and as you approach the city, you begin to hear subtle harps and flutes as the city pretty much never is completely quiet. Well, a hopping nightlife city that's always dark. This is my kind of town. It honestly kind of feels like a town that's kind of separated itself from history, too. Because while you see cars on the road and stuff like that, this still very much has... A, a largely undisturbed atmosphere compared to what it had in the age of heroism. That was the age that 
the last campaign took place in. It feels more like a traditional fantasy town than a lot of these other towns do, with, of course, some modern accommodations. Ancient Greece. Instead of frogs and crickets, you have harps. So, and of course, there is a hero's guild here, too. Um, I guess we go into the hero. Well, should we go into the hero's guild real quick to see what they got? Here, let me just go ahead and do a thing. Just so you guys could be perusing. If you would like anything. Do you guys see the parcel? Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I will say that in this Heroes Guild, ironically enough, this is this is weird. Um Everybody knows that orcs and elves don't really get along. Um, this guildmaster is an orc. Like, not a half-orc. This is a full-blooded fucking orc. Hey, what? That you see in this <clears throat> hero's guild that's the guildmaster. And as you approach and you begin perusing his wares, he turns to all of you and says, Welcome! My name is Vorakish. Please, feel free to peruse my wares. As good as it gets in this bloody city. Um, can I afford that Glancer Regalia? Uh, the Glancer Regalia is 10,000 gold pieces. And Nick, I FYI, I feel like you should look at this too. I was trying oh, to is there only it. one? Uh, there is only one. Yeah, I have enough. I'm take a look at it real quick. Okay. FYI, Nick, this is the item I was telling you about. Yeah, I was trying to look at it, and then I got kicked from the server. Can you drop the parcel again? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I need something that boosts uh, my AC. So, is the this vial of Stardust a, like, one use per vial? Uh, yes. But, also, it's only a thousand gold a vial. At least as of now, of course, you guys can always persuade if you want. Sorry, I know this one's kind yeah. of a big shop. <clears throat> yeah, it's all good. Uh, so I show the King Glancer to the shopkeep. Um, how about this King Glancer for seven uh, thousand gold for the uh, gla uh, Glacier Regalia? He looks at it and it's says. Interesting. He he kind of he puts a set of goggles on and turns a few dials to where you see a little magnifying glass come out. So I must be um forthright <laughs> about one thing about this Glancer Regalia. This is a replica, um, the true Glancer Regalia <clears throat> that was worn by a legendary hero whose name has been forgotten to time. However, what did carry on is his prowess of with marksmanship. <laughs> Apparently, he never missed a shot with a bow. 
The real armor is rumored to still be out there. This is simply a replica that's been enchanted to resemble the effects of the original. Yeah. With that being said, it is still a quite potent set. Yeah. Give give me a persuasion check for that for the King Glancer that you offered him. To see if you can get a discount on this. You're trying to buy this just for just seven thousand, right? By trading in that. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the the three thousand would be the King Glancer, and then the rest of it will be the seven grand I'm going to give him. Give me a persuasion check. Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, yeah. You still have Don't expertise use... in persuasion. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's a moderate but, uh, success. If you wanted to try for higher, you can't. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use a luck point. I've got two inspiration and three luck points. We're going to use a luck point. You've got to be shitting me. <laughs> he looks at you and uh, says... The 18 goes in effect, right? The yeah, the 18 effect? goes. Okay. He looks at you and he says... That's a satisfactory deal. Not a penny more. But I can give you 3,000 off for this. Sounds good. I use a luck point for nothing. But that's all good. Uh, well, no, because yeah. if you'd rolled high enough, I would have given. I would have made it even more than 3,000 off. Oh, shit. Yeah, Cam gives you that 50% discount as long as you can get, like, a decent roll. <laughs> All right, the profit margins of these shops, man, it, it swings wide. But also, it's a plus 14 in persuasion. That There's no difference between somebody rolling a nat 4 and getting an 18 off of that than, than somebody rolling a nat 18 with no bonuses. There's no differences there. An 18's an 18. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds great. So I'll take that out of my inventory and I'll be sitting in the corner. Do I have time to attune to this? You know, on the way to the Magi temple thing, I'm going to be. Uh, you, you can attune. That, that's attune fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Holy but you, there's a guy Sorry. A plus three to AC. Oh my goodness. But it's Sorry. also only standard leather. So it would be the equivalent of like plus two studded. Sorry, I know you kind of wanted that uh, Voss, but... Uh, uh, it's fine, it was intended for who it was intended for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is finally you getting some actual armor. Yeah, this is finally <laughs> getting something. Like, I've had no armor this entire game. <laughs> really? Like, virtually, yeah, virtually nothing. I've had leather he this has entire game. basic Not studded, studded leather. leather. No, you oh. have studded leather. Yeah. Okay, but it's just basic... basic studded leather yeah. that he still has at <laughs> level 17. Still rocking just basic studded leather. Yeah. Dude, I've been rocking no magical gear other than weapons. <laughs> oh, so, but yeah, so that's the uh, the only reason I originally the glance at regalia was a plus two studded, but I didn't like the visuals of you having studs in your armor. So instead, I went for plus three standard leather instead. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. So. Same thing, really. Um, and as he puts this on, you can see it. It looks hefty. Um, this is this armor is at the borderline of what one would consider light or medium. It's still light, but this is some thick ass armor, and you certainly feel it when you put this on. The the breastplate of it is completely solid. I mean, like, when you knock on that leather on the breastplate, it's the same sound you get from knocking on wood. It's it's solid. Um, embroidered into this leather is these purple runic symbols, and you cannot take it off because there is also a blue cape that is embroidered into the back collar of this armor as well, and it is a dark gray in coloration. Very sweet. <laughs> so it does not have the... Is there... So wait, what is the cape? I'm sorry. It's just a royal blue, like, thigh-length cape that's embro that's just sewn into the back collar of this uh, of this armor. 
Okay, cool. It looks almost like it was must have been worn by some kind of nobility at some point. Because it's fairly finely crafted and it looks extremely ornate. Giving... It's just as much about fashion as it is function in its appearance. Oh! You know what I would like to do while we're in this town? If we're just kind of like kicking it for a minute? What's that? I would like to go to a dyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any tailor could dye things. Sure. So, okay. I mean, you, you find a tailor. This is real quick. I just, I have a hodgepodge of gear from all different places that we have it that does not have a matching color scheme. So I would like <laughs> to go to a dyer to like, I got this like red and orange like cloak. I got my black hat, which gives me red glowing eyes. I got, I got all sorts of different colors and stuff. So I would just throw some money at a tailor just to like get all my stuff like thematically fitting. So it doesn't look like I'm just, just... A, a motley, yes, motley, motley, just spread of colors, with my, my what outfit. uh, what aesthetically are you thinking? Uh, like a a nice deep deep uh, black with brimstone red, with like red trim. Okay, um, yep. so you see they have several vials of dye that have this like sparkling, almost glitter like appearance. <laughs> Basically, you would know that you need certain dye to change the appearance of magical equipment because normally it's it's meant to resist everything mundane. So a typical dye, you would just pour it on there and it would just do nothing. It would just roll off of it. Um, but yeah, um, so she does it. It's a nice deep black with like a very vibrant red detailing to it. Cool. That's all. Just, I just wanted to get that done. That's something I've probably meant to do for like a year and a half while we've been playing. <laughs> okay. Well, this is as good a place as any to do it. What does that cost? Me? Question. Uh, ten gold. Done. Uh, Luke, what were you saying, Marte? I had a question for the big Luke. Yeah, man. Luke Deasy, did you by chance ever figure out a way to um? turn my uh, mana crystals into a an adjustable form. Remember, you took a bump off of it a couple sessions ago. Actually, took last a bump. session. Yes, uh, but that was without any prep time. I was just curious if anything had happened within that time period. I'm tired of getting hard randomly. I would very much like this to be fixed. So you would know that that actually, and my apologies, I meant to touch on this. It worked the first night, actually, from keeping your petrification at bay. It clearly did not work the previous night. Okay. Oh, it worked so the it, first time. Yeah. It didn't work after that. Didn't work the second time. So do I need to increase the dosage and do it more frequently? Maybe. Who knows? Am I going to develop a dependency? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just. Oh. I'm just roll to the tower of the match. Like, hey, man. Hey, man. We got, uh, got any crystals? Yeah, man. <laughs> got any of those crystals? <laughs> Darn. Okay. Oh, shit. So I'm going to take that as a no. That it's not feasible. I mean, it, it is. As I would like a, I, I'd like a way to not have to stay polymorphed all the time. In in the event that I get here, something goes terribly wrong. I want to give the big old f u to the archmage. Is there a way I could just, like, can I make some kind of alchemy check to see if there's, like, a temporary solution I could make for him in the right. meantime? You could. It will be a high roll, but you're welcome to try. Well, hold on. Let me do my fate dice. Why can't today. we, why can't we, like, put it intravenously? Like, in my arm? Like, I could tie a, a band-aid around it and then <laughs> inject it. I'm going to be my witness because I'm not putting this on camera. Just go up like... Okay. Yes. Tap, 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 tap. 
Arr! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes! Yeah. A 7 and a 19. Okay. Yeah. Alright, this is for my, my boy Nod, right? Yep. Yeah. Alright, what, yes, kind of, what kind of roll do I need to make here? This is going to be an intelligence check with proficiency added. Right, well, I got expertise in alchemy, so that's plus 12. And my yep. intelligence is a plus yeah. three, so that's a plus fifteen to the roll. Yep. So I'm uh yep. I'm just gonna make this really get taken care of. I'll snap my fingers I get a natural nineteen plus fifteen makes thirty-four. Yes. <laughs> the DC for this was thirty. Was oh, the DC wow. I set for this? Get out of my house, boy! This is alchemy! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So Beaker drop. No, don't do that. I'll break it. Yes. <laughs> you you think about it and you're pretty sure you might So mana crystals. It's it's raw yes. magic hardened into a solid form. It's the non-physical yeah. given physical shape. What yes. if you were to pair that with something with something else that is physical and reverse engineer the process? So that way you can make basically raw magic, again, an energy form, out of this solid in a way that's easily absorbable. You feel like you might be able to accomplish this if you were to crush up some mana crystals, just like before. But if you had a small little piece of a Vold Spike that you could crush up with it and then imbue that with a little bit of magic. And of Bro, course, some either sterile or holy making... water. You are con you're describing the process of making cocaine with D and D materials. <laughs> I'm also gonna get a little bit of baking soda, some of that good old yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> baby powder. Like, are you cutting it with? Okay. <laughs> anyway, you would need Very a nice. small piece of a mix it with some spot. cocoa leaves to give that extra kick, you know, with some flavor in there. Yes. That's However. Perfect. You think you might have more luck if the if the tiny shard of a vold spine came from the vold who was trying to use it. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll probably lay this to a nod and see what we can we can make happen. And you know that obviously you would need to use either completely purified water or holy water in the process, but that's a pretty standard precaution with a. Uh, I got holy water anyway. I, I legit have holy, holy water, water on me because that's part of I my have... components that I carry. Okay. Kind of evil. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're you're not an undead or a fiend, so you're good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, make, a... uh, I'll make I'll make whoop him up a batch after while I'm waiting for my stuff to get dyed. Okay. And Anon, you've ever since, even though you're not petrified now, you've begun feeling a little stiff. Your your bones don't move like they're supposed to. Your muscles don't work like you would like. You feel a little weak and just... Called age. Yeah, that. But except you've never felt the trials of age before because you're a 30-something-year-old elf. So you uh, normally would feel very, very spry. Hey, Gavin, real quick. It says it turns my AC base to 11, right? The armor? Yeah, but plus 3, so it's a total of 14. You yeah, plus so how do I make my base AC. 11? Well, if because you just equip it, if you equip it, then it that will it. Um, do that for you. Yes. Okay. I tuned to it. Yeah, uh, so let me look. Oh, um, I gotta actually equip it. Hold on, I think I got this. My bad. Uh... Evankind equipped it. Wait, where does the plus six come from on the AC? I didn't mean to press that. I just had three on there. My bad. Oh, well, it would Why be a plus four, actually. Town? Anyway, let oh. uh, yeah. Sorry, so, my bad. Go ahead. I was going to say, while we're in town, I don't know if it's mobile, but I, I had considered something. Um, I have never bought clothes while we were in this campaign i I've, I've never purchased robes i only have gotten staves and potions and I, I got a cloak at the very beginning a cloak of protection but i i've never gotten any wearing normal robes oh dude come out here to the tailor me and you we can go and get matching fingerless gloves 
That would be <laughs> cool. I would like that. Yeah, I mean that that is a thing that you can do. Oh. I'm down. So, okay. Uh I mean you are you're at the tailor. So How much do you yeah. want RP buying gloves, <laughs> my guy? Uh not only a very small amount. So how how are you what do these gloves look like? We'll just say you have them. Drop a gold piece and you got the the nicest gloves anyone's ever seen. Why does he keep putting it to six? Oh, just uh it's it's because you're equipping it when you here, it's just it's gonna be plus four. That's what it does. Unless okay. you have like it's not turning my base to eleven. Oh, your base won't change. Your base oh, is gonna okay. stay at ten. What sets uh, your armor is that is that plus area under armor. armor. Okay, my bad. Right, yeah. Go ahead. Do with your the thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I didn't have anything that was fancy for that man. I just I'm cool go get some gloves. That's all. What color are they? Hot same. pink. You gonna be the same as what I got. I'm no. gonna get the black one wear trim. All right, you are given two pairs of fingerless gloves with a black base and red trim. I like it. And I mean, give us another chance. Give you another chance to describe your character, Marte, because you can basically just as nice as you want the robes to be. That's how nice they'll be. How do they look? Well, I have never been one for adornments. I'm more of a, um, a classic gentleman. Um, and I've always leaned towards a, a scholarly robe. If you think of, um, think of gentlemen teaching in a college, their robes could be, you know, something of nicer material. Um, occasionally I'll have some lace around the cuff, uh, velvet lined, uh, you know, just think of an old English professor. Um, but in this instance, I wanted something that reflected power. And um, let me check something real quick, and this will tell me exactly what I was thinking. Where is our photo from last week? What what Discord is this there? Okay, I am. I want something that reflects power. And I also want to impress my new gal. So I want to get robes that are the same color as what she looks like. Well, her robes are white. I meant the color of her wings. Oh, silver. Yes. So I want it matched. Um, I, I don't know if it's... I don't know if maybe she was shedding that day, but I'll, I'll have taken a scale with me. <laughs> you also have her dad right next to you who has the same color scales as her. Yeah, but he's, his might be off color. You know, uh, uh, be like, <laughs> be like, hey, do you think this mat matches? Do you think she'll like this? <laughs> what, do, what do you think about this? But I want them very nice. I don't want them gaudy. I don't want a cheap, shiny material. I want high-end opulence. Like, regal is the very uh, least of words to describe this. So the tailor says to you, Elvish silk has often been described as giving a shimmer, and it catches the light in a very similar way as metal yeah. and gemstones do. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can we do that? Very well. That um, that'll cost you. It's a bit of a nicer job. Five gold pieces. Keeping in mind, and five gold if, pieces is like spending five hundred dollars for a normal person on a set of clothes. Yes. But that's nothing to you. Yes, clearly not. Um. And if I may, I uh, her her eyes are what are they? Are they like a crimson? They're like a yellow. Are they a light like red? a. They're, they're like bordering yellow and orange, but like a deep okay. yellow. I want the stitching to be that color. Like a golden yellow? 
Yes. Very faint, but noticeable. <laughs> um, and uh, you said, how much am I giving him? Five gold? Five gold. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Um, I'm gonna throw in an extra ten um, gold, or an, an extra five to make it ten. If he can do me some boots that match. Okay. Yeah, she says. Yeah, she'll agree. What does um, what does the archon think? He gives you another side eye. <laughs> and. Uh, he says to you, <laughs> you know, even when shape changed, did you know that dragons still have access to all of their draconic abilities? Interesting, isn't it? As he's last time when he says it, he <laughs> hovers on the s of it as you see a yeah. little bit of ice trickle out of his mouth. <laughs> it's pretty cool to hear. Thank you for the fact. <laughs> I, I am not a, I, let's go with um, oblivious I don't think Anand is even making the connection he's just he's just being very open <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yes because <laughs> he's just being very he's, ha he's not used to being happy so he, he would. When when have y'all ever heard a non go shopping uh, doing something like this? Ever. <laughs> Anyways, I know it took multiple Happy. impending po apocalypses yeah. and like heroes dying, and, yeah. and we are stopping for clothing. Yes, we are. Uh, I, La think, uh, I think I know you're uh, trying to look good for your interview, Anon, but I really do think we should be there before we're late. Time I'll to go okay. to the Magi. However, it seems as though the Archon has disappeared. He's not gone for long, but there's a good hour where you just don't know where he is. And in that time, he comes back and says, Drexel Belrook is in Strega, the city of goblins in Vuel Colos. Hmm. So, do we need to stop? Uh, well, we still have to go to the tower first, correct? Of course, but it's up to you. If you wish to speak with them, then we now have a good lead on where they are. <sighs> Look, That's no matter word. what we do, we're going to have to come back here. And now it's not at full capacity. Well, he's got whatever cursing that... Well, of course, I am on. completely in agreement. We need to get his curse removed, first and foremost. Yeah. Gelberg is only a few hours away. I would... um. I'd wear any warm or cold weather clothes that you have. It's, uh, when I heard it's approaching about zero degrees there at the moment. Oh, but... I think I'm okay as I just kind of open up my cloak and it's just like this roaring fire, I guess, type of thing in there. <laughs> I literally, like, leave little smoke trails where I walk. It's a thing with the robe. Okay. Well... But, yes. Yeah. So, you, you know, I mean, Gilbert, like you said, is only a few hours away. Um, you can take the airship or just the car. Off Up to, to you. the wizard or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we are going to see the wizard, aren't we? Wizard of Oz. <laughs> For a little background, um... The Tower of High Sorcery in Galeberg is the second largest in the world, with the only one being larger is their headquarters in um, King's Crest. Oh, is the Arch Magi the, like, is he considered the strongest guy in the country? Or uh, the Arch Mage is considered to be the come? strongest wizard or mage in the world. Uh, you are Which currently world? in the presence... One? Just that one, but he has a chosen of Mistra, so there's only a handful of those in the multiverse. Um, Stronger than the he, he's up there with like Elminster. I'll put it that way. If we're talking about the full multiverse, okay. So, um, but anyway, 
Uh, yeah, so the Tower of High Sorcery is this in Galeberg is the second largest location. I forgot what else I was about to say. I'm sure it'll occur to me later. So as you approach into the city, it occurs to you that this is where the princess who was in Heralds of Requiem, who just literally died, is the crown princess of. Oh, should I guess? Yeah. You've met her once before, if you remember. Mm hmm? Good. Yeah, we even had actually a uh, couple times. Green, whatever his face is, the martial artist. He was like traveling with us briefly. Yeah, yeah, and he's one of the other ones that died. Yeah. Um. So, as you approach in this city, there is a very solemn air. Um. Nobody's really doing much, and whenever you see anybody around, they're moving with very low energy, without much purpose. Um, I mean, they just lost their princess. And from what you know about her, she was very beloved. Um, her people loved her. Bon, uh, is, is there, how many, like, is there, is this a pretty wealthy town? Yeah, so to describe it to you, this is very much, like, you've been to a city that resembles this before. This is very much, um, based on, like, Japan as how Galeberg is put together. Okay. Um, they have samurais and monks, and none of the monks are training today. Um, you, samurais that are on guard, there's no training rituals going. They're just standing still, and it's just an incredibly but solemn also, air. There's, yes. There is a hierarchy, right? Sorry, go ahead. There oh, is. There's, a, uh, okay. there's an emperor who is the leader okay. of this town. Wasn't there like a so, festival uh, going on the last time we were in this town? No, you were at a different town. That was Evan Mest. Uh, okay, yeah. You sure so, about that? Positive. You haven't been here yet this campaign. Bond just looks around. He's like, you know, I would <laughs> steal something from the from the rich people, but I just hate to kick a man while he's down. <laughs> and he's <just> walking. <laughs> <laughs> Bond looks at you here just so um this one isn't as big as the other one there is a hero's guild of this town too but i'll just i'll just share it to you in case there's anything that you want to the tower well, i made this list yeah. so long ago why did i put sweet tea on this inventory list of this. It's literally just <clears throat> sweet tea. <laughs> Somebody was craving sweet tea. <clears throat> uh, okay, anyway, so that's the list. Um, the Tower of High Sorcery isn't hard to find, though. Um, it's just this very tall, terracotta-style building that definitely matches the architecture. Um, with that being said, that is purely an external detail um you would know that this city i mean the tower of high sorcery is going to look pretty similar inside of each of them so but you find it um they have a you know a squad of eldritch knights that are kind of just stationed at the entrance but they don't stop you as you approach um so entering the tower you let me look at my notes real quick so entering the tower, um, picture like very Harry Potter-esque type of magic as when you drive into like an area like at the very bottom of the tower where you can actually like park a vehicle inside. Uh, for starters, in Doctor Who-esque fashion, um, it's bigger on the inside. Um, that is immediately obvious because from the outside, this is a very narrow tower. But on the inside, it is quite expansive. Um, it's busy, as you see a lot of initiates and entry-level magi um, co like copying down spells, making scrolls, uh, casting spells, and communicating with other branches around the world, and just going about guild business that you don't fully understand necessarily. Um, with that being said, you look upwards, and there's a series of like shifting staircases that rotate back and forth with magic circles that lead to who the fuck knows where. As you see people just in a conveyor belt fashion walk into it and other people walk out. People walk into it and other people walk out. <clears throat> so question, the um, 
Ring of Wind, does it have to be attuned to? Uh, it doesn't say in the item description. No, it's just uncommon. So I think you can actually just have it and use it. Otherwise, it would say attuned. Yeah, that's what I would think. There's something I put in that shop that I thought you guys might need, but who knows? You guys are resourceful. You may not even need it. Well, so I'm guessing it doesn't require attunement. No, if it doesn't say it requires it, then it doesn't require it. I, I asked the guys if I can take 200 out of the uh, group bed. Sure. Sure. Is that okay? All right. Yeah. So I'm going to buy the, yeah, the ring of wind. Okay. Yeah. So I'm taking 200 out of the group bag and then 300 out of mine. But I am officially pretty gonna, much broke. I am going to buy the jar of air spring. The jar of. Really? Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. I just kind of threw that in there on a whim, and I think any of you guys would buy that. How much? Uh, that is a hundred gold pieces. That one's super cheap. Okay. I will buy um, the juice cup. The juice. Yeah, I forgot even making. Yeah, that's a hundred gold yeah. pieces. Uh, <laughs> it's for the name of a fruit into the cup. If the cup is filled with water, the water's colors and flavors change to resemble that kind of fruit juice. Dude, it's like Infinite Neo. <laughs> <laughs> what Fair does this point. thing even look like? Who oh, it's, want it's a that? skull. Oh, yeah. I'll it's be a sipping skull my... that's been turned into a cup. There you go. I'll be sipping through my skull, having my, my little fruit juice. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you, you, you got the juice cup. You put that there in my inventory. Go. Yeah. Uh, and I'll do the jar of air spring. Just out of curiosity, for my own sake, what ideas would you have with the jar of air spring? Would you have for a jar that just blows air? Breathable air. Well, it's breathable the air is breathable air. I'm, people are always trying to trap me. So uh, you can never not be angry like with breathable air. Fog go through. You can always open it up and it'll out some of that, that yeah you know what that makes good sense okay Poison well you got it you never i don't know. know why we're telling the dm our plan of how to use this now we're fucked i don't know why he's well, asking i was just <laughs> genuinely curious go ahead and toss that out the door see what you gotta I, do i'm gonna be... forget you even told me after this anyway no, you, you, you buy so many different magical items and then you just sit on it for like a year and a half and then you just spring it out on them that is like did you not yes. remember that i bought yes. this 20 something sessions ago <laughs> Let's go yeah, to the like tower, guys. Team, just in case. Let's walk One into the tower. One boss battle. Turns out the guy was just parched. Give him a glass of sweet tea, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. <laughs> I walked yeah. into the tower. It's hot down here. Jeez. You, you guys are in the tower. I'm surprised nobody's bought the sweet tea. All right. All right. So you are in the tower, and oh, the, sweet the tea. Archon... I have any kind of flavored drink I want now. <laughs> I will never need to buy sweet tea again. Well, it, no, it can't make sweet tea. It can only make fruit juice. It makes fruit too, so it's flavored like tea. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm yeah. going to say it can only make any kind of fruit juice is what I'm saying. But you can make a fruity tea. You, you could you could make strawberry <laughs> juice or, you know what, you could make banana juice with that because banana it's a fruit. Perhaps? But is it fruit like juice? Perhaps. Oh, man. Oh, right. Or All right, sweet. so... The Archon is with you, by the way, obviously. And as you enter, um, yeah, I mean, he he draws a lot of attention. He's the second in command of uh, of the Magi. So, of course, he draws a lot of attention. Um, he says, I've been instructed to take you, Bond, to the Council of Three. Bond? They've traveled. Me? 
Oh, not Bon. He meant Anand. I meant to say Anand. <laughs> I've been instructed to take like you, her? Anand, to the Council of... I, I, I meant... To, your your name's yeah, Ryan. Anyway, uh... Anyway. To the Council of Three. Um... Okay. Those members are Gaius Marketh. He is the white robe wearer, a member of the Order of Scribes, and he is a human. Then there is Daria Moonglow. She wears the red robe, and she is a blade singer. And in the black robe is Sensa Heave, a shifter who specializes in graviturgy magic. They are the ones who have been instructed with removing your curse. With that, um, he he taps on a part of the ground that you can't even see, and when he does, you see this like cyan-colored rune show up. As without saying a word, he steps onto it and vanishes. You know, Lucas just pauses for the briefest of moments and just like, why do they want me to be in the Magi? Oh, I know. A nod's part Elvis. You gotta be Elvis to use ancient magic. Ancient magic is racist. That's all it is. Well, you <laughs> yeah. would also know, yeah. Lucas, the, the Magi is, they're, they're an order of wizards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach, as you say this, I'm gonna reach into my wallet. I don't even know if I have a wallet. I'll reach into my coin purse. I'm gonna pull out this small card and I'm gonna give it to you and it's gonna say Elv Elvish privilege card <laughs> <laughs> and i use this <laughs> i'll put that in my inventory elvis go. privilege card <laughs> <laughs> for use in tight spots <laughs> how many usages is it like a one time is there just a one -time does it recharge every dawn like <laughs> that would be perfect <laughs> you're, you're gonna see somebody with a hat that says like make Alpharesk great again and they're gonna have that they're gonna be like for sale my elvish privilege card it's gotten me that would nothing be perfect. that's perfect i've somebody gave actually gave me a, uh, a card like that before it was chris chris has one of those cards anyway go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> okay um so yeah, he he steps onto the cyan arcane ring and just disappears. Well, after you anon. Me next. Um, we're all going. I don't have to go by myself, right? I don't know this guy. I mean, they didn't tell us we couldn't go, and we came this far. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's do it. I don't okay. want to get kidnapped. So uh, you find yourself standing in a extremely large room, circular by the looks of it, with ornate stonework etched into the walls and the floor um, in colors of vibrant blue, gold, and purple, it looks like. Um, uh, before you is three individuals that are standing around a table and noticing your arrival they turn towards you so you see a human male wearing a white robe that is currently holding his spell book he looks to be upper middle aged probably in his late 50s early 60s um definitely has some like a salt and pepper beard that's not terribly long but maybe like neck length um just kind of disheveled salt and pepper hair um you and next to him you see this what looks to be moon elven female very pale skin um black hair blue eyes um who has what looks to be a double-bladed scimitar across her back formed in kind of an x formation because she also has a staff across her back as well and then one individual in a black robe which looks to be a cat shifter female um and again, like she's wearing black robes to to s give some uh, backstory on this. Um, the Magi for their ruling council pick one member to they always have a white robed member, a red robed member and a black robed member representing good neutrality and evil, um, essentially representing all of the different purposes that magic can be used for. That doesn't necessarily mean that somebody wearing the black robe is a evil person but they represent the harm that magic can do 
and what I mean by that is they're typically the person that would develop like destructive spells, for example. Um, so that that's just that's just the, by tradition how they've always had their leadership council, the council of three. That's what they've always done. There's a white robe, a red robe, and a black robe. So there's your backstory. Gotcha. So, um, the red-robed individual, the female elven blade singer, steps forward, and she says, she gives a first a very formal bow, and she says to all of you, Motley Crest, thank you so much for taking the time to come out here. Now, she she speaks in a way that almost is like, she might be a moon elf, but... She also might think she's better than you at the same time. Moon elves are typically very humble. Maybe this one isn't. Now, thank you so much for sacrificing your valuable time for coming out here to see us. And the human steps forward and says, Daria, must you always carry yourself with such indignance? Apologies to my quite rude counterpart, Motley Crest. I am Gaius Marketh, and surely I understand it has been a great sacrifice for you to take your time to come here. After all, with everything that is going on, surely there are other places that you would rather be. So you have my thanks. The black-robed individual has yet to speak. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I might... It is... These aren't the best of circumstances that I'd uh, have liked to have been invited for, but um, if the uh, if assistance with my curse is on the table, then uh, I I'm certainly not going to refuse the uh, the help. Well, our assistance does not come one way. He gets interrupted as the one in the black robe speaks up and says. And she says to you, we demand your loyalty. You are to join us. What? We must dispense with the pleasantries. Daria, Gaius, I know you intend to toy with this one, but let's all be realistic here. You only want one, one thing out of this. And the same goes for us. You are to swear yourself to the Magi. What do you want Magi. me? What? What use am I to you? I cannot say other than that our leader has demanded this of us. We are to assure your compliance. I... That's all well and good, but you're asking me to swear fealty without giving me a reason why. I'm... I'm I need more than that. I appreciate Your knowledge help, and but, uh... skills... He thinks there is oh. something special about you. Therefore, he desires your membership. It is as simple as that. We are not one to question the Archmage. If this is what he desires, then this is what we must produce for him. Is the Archon here? The Archon is there, yes. But he... Technically, he is actually above these people. He is one step above these people. But well, he hasn't I'm... said anything yet. I'm, I'm going to involve him since he's the one who brought me here. What do you think of this? That someone is just telling me, hey, serve me. Uh, I'm not really going to tell you why, and you'll get a small perk out of it. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to say it candidly since they were in, insistent upon dispensing with the pleasantries. Does, does that he, not seem odd? He, um, he pulls his hood up a little bit more and looks down almost... Hiding his eyes in shame. Anand, I am so sorry. I have had the ability to remove this curse from you though the entire time, but you must understand that Oh I I didn't have oh a choice. I was instructed and I had to do what the Archmage told me to. He is a chosen of Mistra. Now, rest assured that this is not a threat that he has made towards you, nor do I believe he would, but if he so desired, he could take my magic away. So, 
it is with my deepest apologies. But this was the plan the entire time. Well, my, uh, I'm, when he says this, I'm going to have, uh, needless to say, I'm going to have hurt in my eyes from the very beginning because I was truly considering him one of my close friends and mentor. Um, but, um, how, how can I put this? This isn't the first time. I've been on the receiving end of someone playing the long game to use me for something of which I'm not aware because they think I have some value that I don't get a say in. Um, and I, for one, am not here for it. I, there, I'm quite sure there are people including yourself here and I'm talking to everybody sitting on there with their beautiful robes that are much more talented, much more intelligent, have much more use. And I've always aspired to be a part of a group like that, but not in this capacity. I will not be backed into a corner without explanation and then used. It's not going to happen. So, so. the one in the Gaius Marketh in the white rope, he speaks up. This would not come without mutual benefit. I would have you know, for starters, you would get a set of our initiates robes um, that would immediately produce very tangible bonuses to your magic. Um, on top of that, we have quite an extensive library of spell scrolls. In fact, one of the largest in the entire multiverse. Any spell that you could think of would be yours to command. And for what only a fraction of the cost. Hey, can I... What does membership give me? Mm. Or uh, uh, Let me rephrase this. What does what advantage over me does membership give the Archmage? Um, Lu uh, Lucas was starting to say something. <laughs> okay. I just want to like say? be standing next to Bond. I'm gonna give him a look, see if Bond can make a slot of hand check for something. I want to try and hand him something. Yeah, I uh, I see his look. And yeah, I uh, try to grab whatever he's got for me. All right, cool. uh, both of you guys give me a slide of hand check. We'll take the average between your two rolls. Oh, but that's not good for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you might want to use a luck point there, bro. Inspiration. Oh yeah, luck point, luck point. I'm gonna use a luck point. You still got a 19 <laughs> with a two. <laughs> but that roll Lord. is gonna likely be dragged down by Lucas's oh. it is going to be dragged down by Lucas's ah, there we go. Okay. I'm also going to so. use a luck point <laughs> Ooh. okay so that is a difference of 24 in your roll so we will meet in the middle and say you got a 19 on that All right. let me look That's... at their passive perceptions ooh you are so lucky <laughs> uh, you don't think they noticed Cool. Go. <laughs> even the archon. Clutch. Uh, even the archon. So uh, it, it's nothing. It's just prep, just in case things go bad. <laughs> He's got a potion of alchemist doom. <laughs> Send me over that. What will I? So it's and legit. I'm just if they're magical, this ain't magic that they're gonna be able to block. This is tear gas that'll poison them. So. If things go bad, me and Bond got his back. Okay. Oh, yeah. Bigger blast rack already. He he says to you, this would mean nothing for you now. The only immediate this think about this. We are offering you a high rank within the Magi. Many fight for their entire careers for decades oh, oh, to oh, reach the position that we are offering you. It's not that I'm opposed to the position or the membership. I'm opposed to the fact that you lied to me. Um, they've made it very clear that pleasantries aren't part of this. It's simply 
He wants me. He doesn't owe anyone an explanation, including me, as to why. And I'm to swear fealty. I don't like the way that feels. I don't like the way that sounds. That 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 just I've owned enough slaves to know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> they they say to you and he says do and you can tell he, he has a much more I, I guess I should say amenable demeanor compared to Sensaheev, who didn't really care how she sounded but he is actually trying to sound like a nice person to you at the very least the other two I, you can tell don't really care but this one um at least he's trying so he says to you look we're we are not going to force your membership this day i can tell you that until you join the archmage will likely never stop attempting to recruit you but if there is nothing that we are going to do to prevent you from walking out the door on this day. But what I can tell you is that we have been given orders from the Archmage to attack that one right there. He looks at the Archon. If he attempts to remove your enchantment, your curse, without the Archmage's permission. <clears throat> You're going to attack someone in a higher position than you? We have the we have the ability to do so when it is the Archmage himself who is giving us the command. I also say huh. this because do not be too hard on the Archon over this. I'm, word has not escaped us that he has been a mentor to you. I can assure you he had little choice in this. I am now, going. I, oh, I do uh, want to make out, out of out of. I was going to say out of hurt feelings. Um, I'm just going to kind of give him the side eye and say, "So much for a dragon's pride." So much for a dragon's what? You cut out pride. Pride. Oh. He hasn't stopped hanging his head in shame and keeping his eyes covered with the hood. He uh. he clearly does not feel good about this. Now, I, I, I don't mean to speak up and interrupt anybody, but I did want to talk to Anand. Now, Anand, I would say, if you were put in the same position, you could release someone from a curse. But if you did, all your magic would be stripped away from you. Would you have done it? It depends on who it is. But if there was another way that this curse could be lifted without your magic being stripped, would you not help them do that way? Or, or, it, it, or potentially give them the opportunity of that other way rather than you getting stripped of your magic? Just a thought. I, if, I, if me, if if the only way to remove Lucas's curse would be to either A, do it myself or risk losing my magic or B, ruin any type of relationship I had with him by saying I didn't know, lying to him, and coercing him into coming here and still not offering an explanation, then I might actually be willing to go with the first one because that's what friends do. Yes. I agree. And it I've wasn't... not had friends a very long time. I agree. But friends do make mistakes. And they they should have they should be given the chance to be forgiven. But I understand where you're coming from. Lucas. But he is trying to what help you. What do you think? I... I think this is a cult. What do you think? Look, I'll be honest. I, I came from my own magical community. The witches, we take care of each other. Here, this came from deceit, threatening from a dark place. And even then, if you work your way up the ranks, the guy that's in charge is willing to turn on his, his number two and have everybody attack each other on the inside as long as people go against his tyranny of do this deceit to bring you in that's that's not how we do things in night fine not at all so no i'm i'm not a fan of how this works no matter how powerful they are that's not how you that's not how you grow i agree 
Who do I hit first? My feelings, exactly. <laughs> no, we, I don't know how to hit these people. <laughs> I'm probably not in the room for that. <laughs> Ooh. So much haste to my necessary. Not, I'm not going to say yes or no, but I do not want to make this decision right now. I'm uncomfortable. The one in the black robe speaks up and says, then suffer with your curse until you make a decision. That's fine. I've been turning to stone. I look cooler than you do. <laughs> I'm just going to turn around, Batman cape wave, and walk Was oh, that away. a reference to the fact that she has, like, cat ears and a tail? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, My good. cosplay is much better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Archon, you know his decision. Now, I guess it's time to go. And I will be telling my love about this. Yeah. Yeah. He you know going down tonight. Christmas just got weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uninvited. <laughs> He before you step back to the teleportation circle, he just he repeats the same thing that he'd said before, like Anand, I just I didn't have a choice. I'm sorry. My dad used to say the same thing before he beat me. <laughs> I'm not, I don't I don't mean in real life, that's just what a nod to say. Oh. <laughs> He, he, no, he did. He never said he didn't have a choice. He just used to tell me not to do it again, and he could beat me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of tapped. You know, the I thought the bag. when I left the primals that I was getting away from senseless monsters that only cared about themselves and bloodshed. And I seem that. It has a way of just finding itself right back. I damn. get away from me, and I, I'm just I just leave. <laughs> Dang, so, that, yeah, that stings that me. <laughs> I was about what? To say, God, damn. <laughs> that was freaking hey, hey, hey y'all ain't never left the hood. That's what it's really like. Okay, I moved to McDonough for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> On the way out, I kind of tap uh, the Archon on the back. It's okay. He'll come around eventually. He is trying to marry your yeah. daughter. He yeah. is trying to marry. <laughs> he is trying to marry your daughter, your daughter. So he's got to like you eventually. He and says, he "I'm sorry. What now?" Before he <laughs> before you walk out. And... <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of ignore what he says and walk to, to the portal. I just, I would like, like, we're, sidebar narration. This scene is truly testament to Anon's character development. Because there would not have been a conversation about feelings and expectations from friends or mentors at the beginning of this thing. This this is like you know this is like Vegeta coming around, Such a you know when he goes character. to blow himself up to to kill Majin Buu. Like th this would not have happened. He yeah. would have died in that room, throwing fireballs. <laughs> it, it, at one hundred percent, yes. <laughs> so the fact that he's vulnerable is is nice. I'm liking that. Uh, I am too. It's okay if we take five real quick. I gotta run to the restroom. Yeah, I need to get something yeah, to drink too. <clears throat> All right, we'll reconvene in like ten twenty-five. Oh, by the way, the um, I told you wrong. I gave you malice, not uh, oh no malice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yo, I knew this was a setup from the beginning. I was like, it's the I know the Archon's in on this. I know the Archon is there's no way he's not in on this. Sure enough. Sets me up. Oh. I mean, we all kind of knew that. Yeah, but we're gonna have to knock it out either way. Otherwise I was just gonna keep on coming out to be a thing to come back here, come back here. So 
Yeah. Well, so I don't know what to do because I don't. I Anand does not want to swear fealty. If ever he wanted to join this, he does not want to join now oh, because no, they showed exactly not. how they are. I, I there has to be another way. So I'm gonna be okay. honest. This is something like we're talking character stuff. Like you said, slavery and all that. Like this is a hard hitter thing for Lucas because he just got out of basically <laughs> having his soul owned by somebody else. So hell no. Yeah. You gonna have someone that says yeah. like you do what I want anytime I want, or else you know you just stay cursed. Fuck that guy. Yeah, exactly. Looks like I'm just gonna be turning to stone every night because <laughs> they're, they're they're not gonna get me. Only thing is I can't learn new magic. No, they don't. Sucks, I got dude. You you got a super alchemist. I'm making stuff. I'll make it however long, man. We just keep on making that for you, and yeah. then you'll be fine. Instead of just having to take that bullshit, watch. you just drink a potion a day. I was think I probably will. I bet you the Archmage actually has something to do with the big bad, and it's a good thing I did. Watch, he's being controlled by Vecna. <laughs> something dumb. <laughs> Ooh, what if he has one of the pieces of Vecna and we don't know about it? I'm pretty sure the high eye and hand of Vecna are, are definitely... Meliana. With Meliana. Yeah, we, we've already got that confirmed, so... Yeah. Definitely are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not on the fence. I'm going to say just screw it. I'm not doing it. You're not going to do it. You potentially have to. Well, I got to go tell his daughter. I'm going to be like, so your dad tried to get me sucked into a cult and he lied to me. And yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, the Crap, next question that you have to ask yourself her? how tied into that? is his daughter yeah that's what i was about to say dude she might be the link softening me up darn it i always you was could... told to stay away from older women you see what happens Ugh. you could potentially join and then leave bro no i'm gonna get her pregnant and then i'm gonna go buy milk <laughs> wait uh, I, I got get her pregnant and buy milk that's <laughs> What do you, get her pregnant, and then I'm just going to go buy milk. That's how you can stick it to them. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go on a cigarette run? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, we still got three more minutes. So I'll give people time to come back if there's anybody who's still gone. Everyone is here. Oh, uh, is. I don't, I don't think Lee's here. Lee, Lee do oh, Lee's not doing anything in anyway. Well, on. I still want everybody here. It's just Lee. That's Lee, not no to say that he serious. might not have something that he wants to do. <laughs> I want the option Sorry. there if something comes up. I was just taking my Claritin. I'm back. <clears throat> oh, dude, I, I get spring allergies too, man. I hate it. Well, it caused me a sinus infection, an ear infection, and laryngitis. Which ah, I just oh, thought it was like a long-term bug that was taking me a while to beat. I didn't realize what it was. So I just kept dealing with it for weeks. So, yeah. So, you, for the first time since all this went down, you all have found yourself outside of the Tower of High Sorcery, alone with each other and your thoughts. <laughs> the Archon has not rejoined <laughs> you yet. Well, I mean, we still have places to be. We, we need to go to the hospital to go see Drexel, who's over in the, the Goblin City. <laughs> Look, I, I'm going to be honest, this sucks, but I still want to find out what it is I can do to find out where Lashana is so we can help her at least. Yeah. And Drexel, yeah, too. let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We had a conversation about Simulacrum's casting wish, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. They can't. Um, it carries not that they can't. It carries the same risk for you as if you had cast it, though. I've wow. said that strictly as a enforcement rule to keep you from decimating my game down to its core. <laughs> Reducing your level intent. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, very literally so, yeah. Okay. Um, after a couple of minutes, 
I'd say probably two or three. The you do see the Archon walk out of the tower. Um, he is approaching you, Anand. Approaching the group as a whole, but looks like he's definitely walking more in your direction. Can I just step in front just for a quick moment here? And bitch slap okay. him in the face. I just want to flex. That's all, that's all I'm going to oh, do. Oh, you're, you're making an attack. I'm going to slap him in the face. <laughs> I'm just going to say it hits. He makes no attempt to, wow. to dodge. But I will say with that slap in the face, it that's hurts impressive. your hand and his head doesn't even budge. Not worth it. Or it that hurt me. More than it hurts you. That's even worse for this situation. <laughs> yeah, he's he's Dang. still a dragon. Um, <laughs> Genron would never. He doesn't know what that means, and neither do you. Uh, Lucas knows what that means, but you don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> he said Shinron he's, would he's, never. No. Um, but... <laughs> He says, you must understand, Anon, this wasn't simply out of my own selfish desire to keep my power, to keep my magic. I have I want to be standing there with you, with all of you, at the finish line. I want to be there as Dargathoth falls. How am I supposed to do that if I don't even have my magic? If you... It is not my job to tell you how to think or how you should feel. But from what I have learned in this very short time that my group of friends has taught me here is that we stand for each other first and everything else after the fact. I, I just can't do that. It doesn't feel right. And I don't do stuff that doesn't feel right. This is for all of you. I want nothing more than to help you, than to help all of us in the coming days. But to do that, I must have my magic. Why do you truly trust the Magi? If he is willing to do all of this, be deceitful from the beginning, not not attempting to conceal, not even putting on a mask of a smile. Does that not seem sketchy to you? Velasrios is a necessary evil. An evil oh, nonetheless, evil, not but a the necessary best. one. He, if not for him, the natural world of magic would have crumbled into oblivion many times over over the last century. In the magi's, in the years of ancient past of our order, there are many times where we have stood at the forefront and protected this world and the multiverse as a whole from universal threats as admittedly corrupt as Velasrios is, as admittedly selfish as he is. The one thing that I can say about them is that he puts the best interest of magic first above all else. This is why I say he is a necessary evil, because he is the guardian that stands at the forefront of the weave itself when nobody else will. Sounds like he's just in a position to ensure that he keeps his power. Has nothing to do with caring about people. He doesn't care about people. He cares about magic and making sure that it continues on. I like my magic as well. And I like my you, friends more. You say hey. that, but yet we got this magic-eating dragon that's going to destroy the world. And I don't really see him doing much about that either. Do you want to know why he will not intervene? No. It's not because he doesn't want to. Mm. It's because he can't. The last Rios is a Chosen of Mistra. Do you know who else is a Chosen of Mistra? I got Dog a feeling you're going to tell me. Yeah. And for that reason, he cannot interfere with Dagothoth until he presents a danger to the Weave itself. Which, as of right now, while he is certainly a multiversal threat, even if he were to destroy every world left, magic would still continue. So because of that, he cannot interfere. Okay. So this guy gets to do whatever he wants, 
except for when he's actually needed, and then he can't do anything. You, you, because under, the you very... understand the reason that that seems just a little, come on, now? The very threat of me being stripped of my magic also refers to him as well, should he upset Mistra. See, just another reason. The, the, you don't have to deal with these kind of rules if you just become a witch. All right? We don't we don't have to play that. We actually <laughs> operate independently. We all get along. It's it, and none of this none of this craziness. But you don't get ancient magic cuz that's racist apparently. No, I, 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 I will point out. If you do join the magi which uh, you know, you make your decision you, you, you do you um you might potentially be able to become a chosen one of Mistra yourself. If we defeat Dagathoth and kind of throw him to the wayside, you know, there's a spot open up, buddy. Yeah, I, but wouldn't that make I mean, us you can do like, it by yourself, have dude. Mistra hate us? If we defeat one of Mistra's chosen, I'm pretty sure Mistra's not going to be our biggest fan. Yeah. Also, no, I don't want to fill the gap. That is, not, kinda... that is not the case. Mistra does not protect her chosen. All that she requires is that her chosen advance the cause of magic, and they are prevented from interfering with each other's affairs. Beyond that, she cares little for their fate. It's a mantle. I'm just saying, this could be opportunity. This could be a, an, another opportunity for you. If Not I wanted a patron, I would have become a warlock. I don't think you're technically a patron. What? Oh, okay. Just All right. I understand a... it now. Yeah, I understand it now. He, I don't he holds up his old. hand. He holds up, holds up his hand and begins counting. He says, Elminster, Raceland. Vecna, Dagothoth, and Velastrios. The five chosen of Mistra in the multiverse. You very well could be the sixth one day. Well, or I should say the fifth. Because I would like to be there to assure that Dagothoth falls. Uh. The Archmage is prevented from interfering with his affairs. There is nothing that says that I am. So they told you that you cannot remove my curse. Not without you obtaining full membership. Now, I will assure you, and I, as much as this means to you right now, because I understand if you mistrust me, but on my honor as a silver dragon, I can assure you that the Magi will not prevent you from doing anything. The Magi just want to give you resources to do what you are already doing. And that is develop your magic into something truly grand in scale. We just wish to give you the resources to do that and for you to represent us. There also comes a robe. Though I can see you've recently purchased a new one, I'd be happy to enchant one with an equivalent okay. enchantment. Cult uniform. Awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cult with a dress code. <laughs> Matching <Great>. straight jacket. <laughs> we do. Well, uh. he told you that he would be happy to enchant your current robe with the same enchantment that theirs has on it. That, like, official members has on it. What, a robe of the Magi? Well, no, not it's it's a, a black magi initiates robe. It's not a literal robe of the magi. There's only one of those. Is that in? Uh, is that in the game? Oh, there, I, I just shared it. it. Let's look at the stats. Your We're, spell save DC and dragon. spell attack no, bonuses each increase by one. And they don't acquire attunement. That's pretty, that's pretty handy. I just, I don't, I don't feel, I don't know why, but I don't feel good about this. I feel like I'm being used for something. 
And I wish There's that I could tell somebody you. Somebody wants something from me, and they don't want to tell me what it is. Perhaps it's just your power. After all, you are you aware that we don't have any members who have mastered time magic like you have? It is an exceedingly rare skill. I'm sure Velastrios knows how to use time magic. <laughs> <laughs> Likely so. A Chosen of Mister has access to, well, anything within the capacity that magic is capable of. But you're, you're quite talented. Your magic is rare. Very few wizards are capable of comprehending the intricacies of your school of magic. At least call it wishful thinking, but my hope is that that is the reason why. I just feel like the moment I join, when you whisked away from some for some hazing and end up strung up somewhere being used as a battery to power something. No, for all <laughs> his for all his flaws, <laughs> the archmage keeps his word. All that would be required of you for now, until the threat of Dogathoth is dealt with, is for you to damage, or for you to repair damaged ley lines, if you ever come across one, and punish those that you see who are fighting against the will of magic, for those who would damage magic themselves. That's it. Until Dogathoth is dealt with, you are simply to serve as the Weave's protector. There will be no other duties required of you until then. So what do you say? I know this doesn't feel good, and I am sorry I deceived you, but I promise that it came from... Well, I'd like to say it came from good intentions, because it did, but I realize how that sounds. Lucas, what do we need to do right now? I was going to whisper over to and nod, like, look, man, I don't know what you want to do. Right now, we need to go to a Goblin City and find Drexel, but I will say, if for whatever reason you decide to go with this, you can at least get something from the Archon. Make him give you his blessing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, this feels like such a sellout. Like, this absolutely is like just feels like the biggest sellout in history. <laughs> I want to see the archive go. reaction. We're going to see Drexel, and I will think this over and have my decision when I return. He says, if it is okay, I would still prefer to travel with you. You can go wherever you want. If you see a dragon trailing behind your ship, Rest assured, it's it's just me. And he just kind of doesn't really know what to say after that point. Like, um, you can tell he he feels awful. That that is obvious. Um, Igneil would have never done this. <laughs> the, the Archon <laughs> has a reputation of being a person with integrity. I mean, he's a silver dragon, so they, they hold themselves up to... I mean, they're good creatures. Silver dragons are neutral good. so Or are they chaotic good? They're, they're one of the two, but either way, they're good. Um, and especially Apparently even more so than others. Apparently they're politics as well. <laughs> well, yeah. Anybody can be can be that, though. You should have told him he's a... Uh, was, what's that do goof of a dragon that we met after killing the obsidian dragon? Rustigal. He's insane. Ross Cole's a better dragon than you are. 
I just <laughs> if if it were up to a nod, you would say screw all of this. I will find my own means of dispensing with the curse. And he would be done with a lot of them. Because that's <clears throat> he's never allowed himself to be controlled. Why would he start now? It's just it I don't he doesn't know any other words either than this does not feel right. Let's uh, let's just say it, it'll get you ready for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so no um off you know, uh, out of game, Gavin. Was your intention for it to sound the way that this sounds? Or did you just say it by this way on accident and you meant it to just be really straightforward like a job offer? Uh, I meant for it to sound the way it sounded with the black-robed individual, because that person sort of okay. lacks... The, she sort of lacks diplomacy. So I meant for that to sound the way it sounded, especially with her. Uh, it was meant to sound borderline confrontational with the way it was presented. Because I wanted to make sure I didn't receive it wrong. Uh, she just sounded like she was very impatient when giving when giving you the offer or when presenting you know what she was told she wanted to just finish the whole transaction and be done with it and didn't really care about your feelings that's what you're getting all Let's right see. off to the goblin <sighs> city oh, sorry go ahead if you don't... wanted to say anything no it's fine we can continue I just okay. don't feel good and I don't like it okay so, I mean, it's it's going to take you a couple days to get to Strega. Um, that being said, you know the Strega is, that Strega is actually part of a rebel faction that exists separate from the Colossian government. Uh, they're part of the Volunteer Alliance, and they are very vocally against the crown of Vel'Koloss. Um. Like, the, the Dwarven King of Welkalos very much wants to see his whole platform as he wants to see a united Welkalos. He wants to see Welkalos <laughs> all all together under one banner and as a, and showing their strength to the world as a united entity. And they just don't want any part of that. Even if he has to, you know, invade them from all sides to reclaim <laughs> parts of them. That Are you talking about Helldivers? Great well, Coloss, no, I'm talking about Russia invading Ukraine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mother Well, Coloss. Uh. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, it takes you, we'll say, probably about a whole day to get there, because that's... I won't say a whole day, actually, because you're at the eastern coast. So we'll say it's about half a day to get there to um, okay. Strega. Um... And yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that you notice upon coming close to Stregan airspace is the thick cloud of smog that's just enveloped the entire atmosphere above the city. There are pillars and pillars and pillars of smoke that are just pouring from every corner of this city. Um, it it's almost looks kind of gnomish in appearance, but... No, um, I mean, yeah, it's just definitely, uh, you know, uh, like the Environmental Protection Agency wouldn't be a very big fan of this city. I'll put it that way. So you begin to approach the airspace and yeah, it just smells smoky as you get closer and closer to the surface before you eventually find a sky dock and you dock your ship. Um, you good, Sean? Yeah, I'm trying to remember if there was someone here. Is there a witch that's here that we know or know of? Not that you know of. I thought. Okay, no more. I thought I might have remembered something, but I might not have. I thought this might no, be where uh, McKenna was. Oh. Wait. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, yeah, you might actually be right. I think you are actually right. I just found it in my notes. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, she's here. I don't know if that was a Sean knows that or a Lucas knows that. I couldn't remember. That was that's a both. Okay. Well, while we're here, just a heads up, guys. Do you uh remember the giant robot in Nightvine? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the the builder of that is in this town, by the way. Hmm. Mm. The thing that gave us pain in the ass for an entire day. I mean, I, I wasn't conscious during that whole thing. I just know that you know that happened. Yeah, it did. It was not pleasant, but it. If you want to go say hi, we can go say hi, but I, I do. I just it. throwing that out there. That was not a thing that we necessarily need okay. to do, but I'm, I'm sure if there's something that, you know, could be done to help out with Lashana, she wouldn't mind throwing in. But. Well, I do feel like she probably already knows. Well, we could update the information that she's still alive. But... I, I think right now we need to keep to what it is that we were already doing. I, I, we can yes, try to find... I don't. I just know that she was out here. I don't know where she is. I'm not familiar with the town. Gotcha. Well, let's go see Drexel. See this, is also, this is also one of the few big cities in the world that doesn't have a branch of the Heroes Guild. Hmm. Exanoch well, does. Their city... The, the neighbor of this city does, but Strega does not. So, but yeah, I mean, you find Strega General Hospital, um, and I mean, yeah, you walk through the door, and, um, you know, there's clearly some injured people, but I mean, it's a hospital, so of course there is, and just staff addresses you and says, who are you here to see? Uh, um, Bellrook. I've been instructed Russell to Bellrook. instruct everyone that he is not here. Yeah. Let's quit the bullshit. We know he's here. And how would you know this? this? Because you just she... said you've been instructed to and tell everybody that he's not here. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> she hasn't even looked up at you. It, it, it's alright. We're, we're friends of Belric, and he'd like to this see us. Is... I suggest you go ahead and yeah. take it straight to him. And I cast suggestion. Okay, that's a wisdom save, right? Yeah, DC 21. Oh, that's it? Yeesh. Okay. Oh, well, that's that's a strong 11, but um, very well. I, I didn't realize you were such friends of his. I shall take you to him. Um, he's in the same room as Norn Brave might. They're in recovery. It appears as though he m is likely going to make it. Wonderful. So much for high security. All it took was a suggestion spell. Anyways. <laughs> With a DC 21, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she um, she takes you to an elevator and you go up a few floors and she leads you down to a private suite, like a larger por part portion of the hospital at the end of a hall and um, pushes through a set of double doors and you see enter into a very large chamber with two beds right next to each other, one with Drexel in it, one with Norn. And the first thing that you notice about Drexel is that his left arm is gone. Um, hey, Gavin, quick thing, just super, super quick. Do we what's see... What's up? Just super, super quick. Do we see Brandon's old character in this town? Unfortunately, he was in the list of casualties, actually, from a recent attack. Um, no, 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 come on, just tell him to be in this town. Like, nope. Um, he it. he fell off a tower and skewered his butthole with a with a spear that was lodged in the ground. Um, Come on, I just wanted to steal from him. <laughs> he he died shortly after from internal bleeding. Okay. Which one right. of his That's characters on. did this happen to? The orc the, that he played. The orc. Oh, the one that could like carry a whole furnace on his back. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I wanted to steal from him, but you know, I wasn't. I'm, he died. Nope. So. <laughs> Butthole trauma. That's how he died. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. But um, I'm sure no. they'll, they'll pass a new law about it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, you notice that uh, Drexel, his left arm is mm -hmm. gone, and he has a bandage over half of his face, where uh, you take it likely he's probably missing an eye at this point, too. Um, you see Norn next to him. He appears to be a little bit better off, just covered in bandages, but uh, Drexel clearly got the brunt of it, but he's alive. And he looks up at the rest of you, and with a grunt, he sits up a little bit. Oh, hey, guys. Wasn't expecting to see you. Um, he holds up a, a cigarette to his mouth for a second, and then briefly, like, looks down at the cigarette like he was about to light it before he realizes that he remembers that he doesn't have another arm to light it with. Um I kind of get the lighter and I light it for him as he lifts it up. Let, let's not smoke in a hospital here, guys. This is. He says, "Oh, don't worry. This is this is Strega. Uh, they don't they don't care." It's fine here. Let, let me just get you some juice. I give a little skull out. <laughs> <laughs> Any flavor you want, champ. Any flavor. Can it be mead flavored? Sure, that comes from a fruit, just fermented. Uh, what, what is it, guys? I appreciate you visiting me here, but what can I even say? I, I'm defamed. I've lost the love of my life, and I'm down an arm and an eye. So, you know, not but, exactly in the best of spirits. Belrook, you'll never be defamed. You will always be the hero of this great world has come to know you all will you will still live on in all these people's hearts we've gone on we've gone several cities past couple cities and people are mourning all the losses you will never be defamed don't you ever think that and this is when I don't know if you guys would get uncomfortable or not, but he actually becomes slightly emotional at this at this point. He's like, my best friends are dead. They're gone. Yes, and it is our job to let their memories live on. The monster, I've I've never seen anything like it before. Its power was frightening. He had green hair, but it looked as if it had mostly fallen out. Um, and the only detail that I can remember from the end of it is that he carried a strange glowing weapon. A spear with a glowing tip. Oh. Yep. Oh it's it's our monk dude that we have killed multiple times. It's the same the dude that Molly decapitated the last time we saw him and he said he was going to be back. He overpowered us and our and our foe so easily. In just an instant he appeared. Defeated us and grabs Shalkor as if he was powerless to stop it. Even he appeared frightened at this creature's power. We had him! And at this point he has anger. He says, we had him! He was down. All that was left was to deliver the killing blow. We had him! And at that point he, he yells and slams his fist into the table. Alright. Not, 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 let's not to get too overwhelmed here. I know. It's frustrating. Um. Well. The only thing to do is to defeat this beast. Yeah, but what did he unwaken now? He's turning to some weird super monster, which is Shalkor's jam, but whatever magic and everything else he's absorbed become this. It's Cypher gone. Or Cypher Gan. That monstrosity was Cypher. There's no... He, he, he barely seemed as though he still had a mind. 
All it did was laugh maniacally as it casted its spells and cut us down. Cyphergan had, uh, he had green hair, didn't he? He did. Yep, there you go. Yep. Well, well I'm... Now... Go ahead. No, 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 I'll just say more. That it, it's Cyphergan. You go ahead. Well, somehow he has augmented himself. Mm. Yes. Is any of you standing next to his bed? I would be. Yeah, same. Um, I'm gonna say. Well, I can't say he grabs both of you. He has one arm. Um. He grabs you, Lucas, by the collar, and almost like pulls you down towards him. You must get. Vengeance, and when he says vengeance, it's almost like a say it, don't spray it kind of thing. As he like spits a little bit, as he spits out the word, he's like, "Avenge us, avenge Lena. This beast is more powerful than anything I've ever seen in my days as an adventurer, and I've been doing this for fifty years. You have to kill it." Well, <sighs> and he lets go of your collar at that point. You can see your robe is a little bit stretched where he was grabbing um, We've as he him. collapses back down. We've killed him twice before, just not like this. But the alliances that they've had has been a bit murky of finding out what is what. But fairly certain he's been working with Cyphergon, or it's not Cyphergon, with Shalcor in some capacity, and Shalcor figured out a way to manipulate his own body to turn into some giant beast, so if we're gonna try and find out what he did, it might be a, a good idea to talk to Shalcor and find out what secrets that they shared with each other for him to be able to go through whatever transformation he did. He took him. Shalcor is with him now. He Oh, I thought Shalkor was taken by our people. No, he got no. taken by Cypher. I... His screams were unlike any agony that I've ever heard as the beast dragged him away. Interesting. Well... Apparently, he, he didn't have enough from when I was last fought him. Apparently, he wants more. Well, I mean, the last we saw was he was up towards uh, whatever Elven City ruin thing it was. Manipulating all the, the magic from the ley lines and from the land out there. Which is something that he's pretty tied into. I think that's why he was so pissed off whenever your bomb popped, but... Yeah. What else can you tell us, Drexel? What else can you tell us about him, strengths, what his attack style was, anything? We're gonna do this. We're, we're gonna need all the, the knowledge you can give us on this. He wielded a spell of his own creation, unlike anything I've seen. It was a spell. I could tell it was not an, an innate ability of his. There was an incantation. There was a somatic movement. This was an arcane spell that created an orb in the air that sucked our very life essence out of us. The radius was enormous. And that's what took my dear Lena... Mm. Interesting. How many of those did he throw at you? Just the one, but he seemed barely phased after doing it. Interesting. 
Well, beyond that, he he carried a very large glowing weapon that he was very proficient with, shall I say. We'll say he broke large, my gun blade. How, how, how big is this guy? I'd say... 15 to 20 feet tall, probably. That's not accounting for his length, of course, but from ground to the tip of his head, I'd say 15 to 20 feet. Alright, so not as big as what Shalcor turned into when we saw him, like, go super size. Uh, no, not as big, but it would be in the same size category. Okay. Well, potentially he wants Shalcor to make him even bigger. We should get and fight this beast as quick as possible to, to prevent him from getting even more powerful. What happened to Lashana? I don't know what happened. She saw the way the battle was going. She saw as we fell one by one. And her body began to contort as she casted a spell that I haven't seen before. Divine in origin. There was a bright flash and then I was here. I don't know what happened to her. Anything else you can tell us that can help us out? Anything at all? He is very, very fast. So fast. Whenever he says the word so fast, he says it in a way that almost gives, like, PTSD presentations, like, with it. Like, remembering how fast he was. It was hard to even track its movements. I just kind of want to back up to the rest of the group if anybody else has anything here. No. At this point, for the first time, um, Norn rolls over. Like, it, you thought he was unconscious, but it looks like he was just sleeping as he says, Did I get some blasted quiet? He used to be a dwarf before he became a near miser. As yeah, he rolls we, over... We've traveled with him before, man. Yeah, I know you have. Um, he rolls over and says... I've little to add that Drexel hasn't said. With that being said, I... In those days that I traveled with you... I saw potential. I saw fire in your hearts. Your warriors. Every single one of you. All champions must fall eventually, right? You can never keep the title forever. I can think of none other who are more suited to replace us than you. Not even number two? <laughs> he, he laughs and said, They're just blasted bald angles and behirs. They... They fluff up their collars, they're bloody good at that. But when it comes to what it really counts, when it comes to having courage in their hearts, they fall short where you do not. We will get y'all's vengeance for y'all's fallen comrades. But y'all must rest. Right. Could you tell the, the nurse on the way out that... I wish for a pint of mead. I'm bloody parched in here. Yes, will do. And I start heading my way out. Alright, I've, I've, I've waited long enough, and this has just got me a little concerned. I'm just gonna find a waiting room, something, area, wherever, and I'm going to bring out the orb, and I'm going to see if I can track down Lashana. Okay. I'll have you roll the d4 in just a moment. So well, I can... So, here's... Because your verbiage on it is a little weird. I don't know when that kicks in. Like, I can do true seeing, and I can do scry. 
but like if I can auto succeed with true seeing, uh, auto succeed with it, and then um, da, 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 where is it now? It, it it straight up auto succeeds on anything that you cast with it. If you try to scry somebody, it just works. If you yeah, but there's just a one out of four chance you can never use it again every time you do that. Uh, and in it, addition to that, it grants you hearing in addition to just sight. So just to make sure, so my interpretation was it lets me cast Scry, but if I want to make it where it auto-succeeds, like that's the one in four chance. Yes, you are right. Um, but, you know, there's certain areas that might have, like, protection against Scrying, yeah, yeah, and yeah, just yeah, yeah. casting it normally, yeah, yeah, it would yeah, not yeah. work for seeing yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So I guess I'll try the well. No, I know the normal way is not gonna work. Fuck it. Let's auto succeed. I want to know where Lashana's at. Okay. So I'm gonna, see... I'm gonna lose this orb not long. It's just just not gonna keep working for me. You. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'll get one. No, one the other existence. one is the Orb of Unhindered Gaze with a different spelling. So, oh, okay. This um, is it, bro. This is all there is in the world. I got lots of magical things. This is one of them. So, you see ruined buildings. You see large spires that are many of them are tipped over and just dilapidated structures. In addition to that, you see a lot of vault. You take this to be the ruins of Invalion, as your gaze narrows even more to a large central structure, above which you actually recognize a religious symbol, only because it's a very common one. You see the symbol of Corallon Lorethian, uh, but that's, for the most part, likely irrelevant, because this building was just a temple. Um... As it enters inside the building, and you see Lashana in a very weird state. She looks like the normal Eladrin that she is, but she also kind of appears a little draconic, too. And she says, you hear her screaming, like, I don't know what's happening to me, but I will not help you as you see this creature it's almost like a spider just he's on the other side of the room and as fast before you as fast as a blink of an eye he's there right in her face oh but you will you see i need your blood i need your essence i'm gonna take pieces of you until the ritual is done and my ascension will be complete the one that was Cyforgan, he was weak, yes he was. And then he's, you almost hear him trail off like, you shut your mouth, as he just looks up in the air. So rude. I will become greater, I will become better, I will become the most powerful being to ever exist. All I need is your sweet little steel blood to get it. Now, if you could just please enter your original form for me now, as he just screams at her and she says, I don't even know what you mean. And you're pretty much getting the gist of how that exchange is going down. Do I see Shalcor in this vision that we're in the background? You see his corpse? <laughs> it appears as though you see you see very large wounds on his wrist, as if his entire arms were torn open. Um, beyond that, his eyes have been gouged out. He did not have a peaceful death. Specifically, you notice that his arms were filleted open, and the entire spine that is present in Vold's was yanked out of his arm. Well, how's a shitty way to go for Shalcor. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I guess I'll pull out of the scry, and I will relay all of those details. 
Huh? I'm sorry. Well, I think most everybody's That's kind of exciting. done here, so, uh... So, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I gotta yeah. go. Yeah, I'm you're you're good. Up. We're 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 wrapping up in just like one or two right. minutes. This is pretty much the gist good of it. Good night, gentlemen. All right, oh. let me do the thing. What are we doing? I gotta roll a d4 uh, and not roll a one. Not one. You want a bardic inspiration? Mm. That wouldn't I'm help. Good. But you're good. Oh, how many? Bardic I took because uh, I, I take two d4 when I start that, and d4 for every action. So how many d4s of damage did I take? Say forty-four to catch all of what you caught. You, however, if you wanted to keep it going, you could catch more. You, you just said there, there was all I was going to get out of it. So I said that, keeping what your character would probably want to listen to in mind. But I can improv shit. If you want to listen longer, I can come up with more shit. That's up to you. I would say yes, but it is eleven ten, and I I have to teach classes in the morning, so I want to just look. If there's more that you feel that there should be, we can just throw that I'll, on the I'll session. send you a message if there is, yeah. All right. So, well, thanks, guys. Uh, I was Thank looking forward you. to this one. This was a big one. Uh, yeah, it was. <clears throat> Open next time. <laughs>